You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Hey, good morning and welcome to Bassmaster Live, the first live presentation of bass fishing for this 2024 season. We're going to start with the Opens. What a great tournament trail this is, the St. Croix Bassmaster Opens in this first event at the Big O. Some say the home of bass fishing in the United States, Lake Okeechobee down here in Florida. A great, great talented field, huge field, as will be the case in all nine stops for this season in the Opens. The Opens very, very important for a lot of reasons. First one is just great, great talent on display, great competition, and it is the pathway to the next, the top level of competition, the Bassmaster Elite Series. There's our playing field. Lake Okeechobee, largest natural lake, largest freshwater body of water in the state of Florida, one of the biggest in the United States for sure. A fantastic takeoff spot there, Roland Martin Marine place there as well. There's our leaderboard unofficially as it stands right now. Scott Martin, the home field advantage, son of Roland Martin with the eight pound lead, almost eight pound lead ahead of Randall Tharp at this time. Randall Tharp has made a move already this morning. Tucker Smith started the day in second place. We have Paul Mark, Sam George, Bo Browning. We saw him. We'll see him catching some fish this morning as well. Matt Adams, Brandon McMillan, Austin Cranford and Eastern Fothergill. So we have got a great, great lineup today. Only 10 remain from that original bunch here. Welcome to you. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. I'm Tommy Sanders. And I want to first, let's recognize our special guest here, the one and only Greg Hackney, overachieving in the sport of bass fishing for two decades now. Uh, former Angler of the Year, six wins, going to be fishing his 18th Classic. Everything recommends you for this job here, Greg. And I want to ask you, that, first of all, you could have picked any one of these to sit in on and give us the guest analysis, but you picked the first one. One. What's special about this one? Uh, Okeechobee is one of my favorite places, and I'm like everybody else. You know, we just came out of winter. I'm, I'm feeling it. Everybody's got cabin fever, so just a great opportunity to watch some big bass being caught. And I'm like everybody else. I'm ready to get the season kicked off. I'm with you. I, I absolutely. I know Ronnie Moore feels the same way too. Yeah, and I love that we're starting down at the Big O and kicking off our open season there. One of the most legendary places, 24th visit for BASS there, all the way back to 1980 when Roland Martin won the first BASS event that visited Okeechobee. Now we come back, you know, over 40 years later, Scott Martin, his son, is leading and in command of this event. This Lake Okeechobee has changed over the years. Many people who probably showed up this week, Tommy, were a little shocked if they remember past years of Okeechobee, but the big fish are still there. We saw a 33 pound bag that broke a record. We could break an opens record today. Okeechobee still has the fish, we just need to take care of this resource as well, and we'll get into that more throughout the day. The man who produces a daily limit for Bassmaster.com, Mike Sukon with us there. Mike, you watch the progress. This is the third day, the final day of competition. What's the arc of the fish catching been so far? Oh, they are been filling their, their live wells every day. We got a record already. Mr. Scott Martin, 33 pounds, two ounces. He's only 21.15 away from the Open's overall record set about 13 years ago down in Florida. The 33 pounds is the single day record for the Opens. All right, well, we got big things happening on this incredible body of water here. Again, we say it's the biggest body of water in the state of Florida, within the limits of the state of Florida. 24th time the BAS has been here. 450 acres, 731 square miles, yet only 105 miles of shoreline because there are no big river tributaries or anything like that. The water, uh, Greg, is high and that makes a difference. You know, the deal is it, <clears throat> it's been a lot of doom and gloom with the high water. They've had it the last couple years. It actually seems like the fish are doing fine. I mean, they're breaking records. I feel like Scott will break the all-time record today. Now he has the area by himself, so, I mean, he has a lot more real estate to fish today than he's had the last couple days. Let's check in with our leader right now. Well, I stopped on the way up here and checked a little spot on the way. The water was a little muddy. Just got up here to my main area. And uh, just a lot of isolated reeds on this flat. Some boats around, but nothing compared to what it was in the tournament. Basically, I'm just fishing super slow. I'm using my power poles a ton. I'm going to, to every one of these little reed heads and just fishing it real slow and methodical. And then there's a lot of stuff under the water too. I'm using my live scope to find a lot of cover and stuff and little cattail clumps under the water that I'm spending a lot of time on flipping and pitching as well. That's about it. You know, it's a big spawning flat. These fish are cruising around in here getting ready to spawn. And, you know, every day I've, I've caught some pretty big ones in here and 
I mean, there's there's a lot of fish still in here. Just have to get in front of the five good ones. I just lost, I think, a good one there. It bit, but I hadn't got it to bite again. I think it's on a bed on that little reed stalk, but we're going to just mill around in here, take it one fish at a time. Scott Martin is not fishing to get into the Bassmaster Elite Series. He is a member, has been since 2001, fished his way in through the it hasn't opens. It has been fast and furious, that's for sure. Every day I just take my time and build a bag program. One big incentive of fishing the opens, Tommy, if you're not fishing all nine, which is the only way you can make the Elite Series, is if you fish a single division, three events, and you win one, you go to the Bassmaster Classic. And for Scott, missing out by one spot at the end of last year, it would be awesome, Greg, for him to already lock up a thing before he's even started the season for next year's Classic. And before anybody even knows where <laughs> next year's Classic <laughs> is going to be located. Let's look at some footage, though, that was captured before we came on the air earlier today with Randall Tharp. That's a big one. Get up in here. Start the day with a five pounder, baby. Okeechobee, baby. That's the way they live, grow here. Yes, baby. In the box. All week right here. Brand new trailer from Zoom. I had five packs, but that is a, it's called a shimmer shad. And guess what? It looks just like a shiner. From Randall Tharp, and let's get over to angler from Athens, Alabama. Qualified in fifth place. Coming in here with 21 pounds, very consistent, just like a Randall Tharp, 21 and 20 pounds the first two days. Sam George. Hey, he ain't as big as he liked when he first did, but he ain't a bad one. How many seasons, right, has Sam fished? Sam is, Sam is a young man, but That's a, a wily veteran for the Opens, for sure. I'll, I I'll track that. down how many years, but it's been at least since 20... 15, 2016. It's been, 2013 it's was his yeah, first almost, open. Yeah. He's fished about 70 something events with BASS. Yeah. Over a decade for, for a young man. And he's been close several times to making the leap. Yeah. Yeah. 28 years old. He's been starting. He's been fishing the open since he was 17, 18 years old. So. It's near Lake Wheeler on the Tennessee River to Sam George. Good place to get a bass fishing education. Over at Oklahoma's Austin Cranford now. doing that. I don't know why you got to be like that. You ain't that big. Oh, maybe it's, oh, it's a little nicer than I thought. Come here. Now I'm leaving my bag for you. Sorry, bud. Yeah. That's a good one. Not bad. Good start. Let it just the way to start today? Yeah. Not bad at all. We'll probably weigh that one in. It's probably a three pounder. Hopefully not. Hack, you ought to like that guy. He said his hobby is shooting big deer. Yeah. That's a guy I'd like to hang out with. <laughs> Austin Cranford, let's get back to Randall Tharp. Biggin'. <laughs> Get 
Yes. It's a man on a mission right there, Randall Tharp, for sure. Really eating into that deficit that he began this day with. What was that? Was he was picked for a reason, Tom. Yeah, yeah, that's right. As you, as you say. I don't know if he'll make 12. It's the problem. All the males that are in here. Look at that. They're trying to do their thing. Even if he's 12, I have to weigh him in in a Ziploc baggie. He'll go. Matt Adams with over 27 pounds on day number one, kind of fell down in the production yesterday, but looking to rebound. This is a big deal for him, even if it was a substantial drop off just to make a top 10, just to survive oh, Florida. So many people, Greg, come down to Florida and are worried about the Florida curse, starting off with a, with a bomb, 130th, 150th, and feeling behind the eight ball all year as they catch up. To get out of here with a top 20 or a top 10 is monumental for the mentals as you go to the sec second. Well, you, you see Bo Browning in eighth here. place, got through Florida, and There's the a few next fish lake in here. Pool yeah. is his home this lake. So. Ones. A lot of guys getting off to one, the right start. You know what? When you get to fish top 10 on Saturday, ain't a bad day. It's the way it was yesterday. It's co cookie cutter all day long. You get your two pounder, and I had one four, and then jumped off a good one. Two six. Little baby brother. <sighs> Where's mama at? Mama was in here on day one. Mama's gone right now. We gotta find mama. Matt Adams from eastern Alabama there, east of the Coosa River there. We gotta we can't take our eyes off this guy very long. Randall Tharp has uh, been showing off this morning. That is for sure. He is uh, definitely on something that is working right now. As soon as we got to the inside, oh, thank you, Lord. There's a little one. We'll take her. Time for a new tail. One down, running out. do a little rationing with his favorite bait there. It's not unusual <laughs> to see during these events here when it gets hot and heavy. That was a 14 pound deficit he carried coming into the day and I know it's early and Scott hadn't caught one yet, but crunching into it a little bit, Greg. Yeah, Scott's gonna be hard to catch. There'll be a period of time today when Scott's fish bite. You know, it's Florida. Typically the afternoons are better. It's, we, they had uh, a kind of a cold night for Florida and it'll warm up today and uh, You'll see, Scott. So, I, I, as far as the picking the making the elites, I'm picking Randall Tharp. But picking to win this event, you you got to bet on Scott oh, yeah. Martin. Well, Randall Tharp, one example of one of the former elites trying to fish his way back in. There are several of them in the field for this 2024 season in the Opens, and we will uh, we'll get some predictions on who is bound to prosper. That should be interesting. That's when we come back. The St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Okeechobee, presented by Seven, is sponsored by Toyota, by Bass Pro Shop, by Dakota Lithium, and by Humminbird.
absolutely perfect weather here, that is for sure. What a great day we have. This is the uh, this is the big wrap up to the first stop of the year for the St. Croix Bassmaster Opens and Scott Martin, son of the famous Roland Martin with a great career himself <laughs> through the years. Uh, over here fishing with the Bassmasters, an Elite Series member as a matter of fact, but he's he's not going to pass up this open on his home water and he has shown why uh, he is a force, a force of nature here, that is for sure. Started the day with an eight pound lead, Randall Tharp though guys, we've watched him in the course of just the last few minutes kind of dismantle part of that lead. I think that it's it looks like a 2011 2012 top 10 right there with McMillan Martin and Tharp <laughs> all Okeechobee winners and just locals that that love this lake. Once again, we have 10 who have made it to this final day. Only 10 after the original 220 anglers here back in the studio here. If you're just joining us, our special guest is one of the big names. It's Mr. Greg Hackney here. And Greg and, and all of us and all of you realize what sort of talent is out there on these opens here. The young talent is formidable. It's, uh, it's legendary. This past season on the Bassmaster Elite Series proved that. And these opens guys are strong, the ones we see here. But we're also following former Elite Series members who are in it this year in the EQ program trying to be elite qualifiers. And that includes names like Ish Monroe, Mike McClellan, uh, uh, Russ Lane, Cliff Pace, Brett Height, Randall Tharp, whom we just watched this morning. So, Greg, we're going to start with a little informal polling here. Who do you pick to be the one of those returning, attempting to return elite anglers who's going to do the best this year? So Randall Tharp is by far my number one pick. I actually even picked him before this tournament. He, uh, he's basically on his home lake this week. He probably knows more or as much as Scott does about Lake Okeechobee. He spent so much time there, but I, I just That's get the feeling that he's really her, motivated. On. He's yeah. won on the elite level. He's won on the open level. Yeah. He's been away for the last couple years and he's looking to get back. You know, he, a guy much like myself still wants to win that Bassmaster Classic. So the Classic is driving him to come back to the elites. Absolutely. We know about his versatility too. He's one of his elite wins. He's up on Bull Shoals, very different place from this. Ronnie Moore. Yeah, I like that pick because in like 20 opens for Randall Tharp, he's gotten five finishes in the top two. He's either won or gotten second in 25% of his opens. So I love that Randall Tharp pick. But I'll go along the same train of thought, but a different guy, Ish Monroe. Uh, he fished the opens last year, coming over from another professional Tour, fishing the opens it was a different mindset change you know when you're at the top level of the sport you you are one of the best in the world but when you step down to a semi pro level you're not quite sure of the competition you're going to actually face the opens are much different than they used to be in 2016 2015 2023 and 2024 has brought a great skill set to the opens and a desire and motivation people don't just sign up to the opens hoping to maybe make the classic or if they get lucky make the elites these guys that's their desire that's their goal goal when they start the year and so Ishman Rowe about midway through the season started to catch his groove I think he's reset his mindset for this year and just like Randall Tharp very motivated to get it done and he knows the whole process of the opens nine events across the country can't really slip up and he started great both of them have so far yeah absolutely okay Mike Sukon Such what do you got well, I was really considering Mike McClellan for his record he's been to uh, 11 classes got eight wins he's up there on our all-time win list but how about an actual classic winner Cliff Pace I think is really wanting to get back. He he dipped his toe in last year with th uh, with one division in the opens. Now he's fishing all nine yes. for the EQs, and I, I think he's really fired up to to get back on the Elite Series and, and and show his classic title in 2013 at Grand Lake was no fluke. Oh, he got three, three worthy picks too. so far. I really yeah. like it. And they all got off to a great start. You really don't want to be worse than 50th or 70th in this first event. They all got off to a great start. I'm not going to let you off the hook, what? Tommy. Oh, you you got to pick one as well. You're not absolved from picking. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to follow your lead. Another Western guy. How about from Arizona? This man right here, Brett Height. Brett Height, uh, before he departed uh, a few years back, he uh, notched a big win at Lake Seminole. When was not a whole lot of elite wins on his charge, but a lot of high finishes through the years. Very, very solid angler who can get it done from the rivers in South Carolina, the rivers, uh, you know, bordering New York and Canada. It's very, very versatile angler, great with the bladed jig and 
And, uh, Innovator with it. Uh, absolutely, yeah. One of the, one of the originals. Uh, Brett Height is going to be my pick there. So those are our, our informal favorites to do well in here. We'll see how that pans out. And we'll hold you to it. Randall Tharp and Brett Height are, you know, somewhat travel buddies and roommates. And Randall said, man, I'm so glad that B. Height did this, the whole jackhammer chatterbait deal, because yeah. that is what I've caught them all on this week. And he's already caught, uh, you know, three fish for 11 or 12 pounds worth already on it. Right. Get out of there. I think that's a better fish. She got me pegged, too. Get out of there. It's a better fish. Come on, baby. Get out of there. Come on, raptors. I think she come off. God, I think she come off. No, she's still on there. I can't tell how big she is. That's a deja vu from yesterday. Same crap. Oh gosh, she's big, big, big. Big, 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 big. Stay out of there. Come here, babe. Let's go. Let's go. Whew. That's what I was here on day one. I was here on day one. Where'd you catch that one off? Caught on Senko. Made the same cast as a chatterbait and swim jig. Championship Saturday. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. Look at the shoulders on it. Make you want to go bass fishing. <laughs> Man, look, I play baseball all the way to the highest level other than getting to play on TV for a living. And I swear to God, bass fishing gets me more than baseball ever did. I never had that. I mean, my hand's shaking. Heck, Scotty's probably down there dropping 40 on us, but it don't matter. You catch a fish like that. Six fifteen, almost seven. I'm gonna wave this back of the boat down. How fun is that? That's so fun. God, I love it. Nice way to make your debut yeah. on Bass Master Live. I was just about to say the same thing. Oh. Man, good stuff. You Matt may Hatch. only get one opportunity to ever be on Bass Live, and you better make the most of it. And, and that's a memorable way to do it for sure. I'm getting a feeling today is going to be a lot of that. Mm. Let's get back over to Sam George, another Alabama angler. Begging, I think, maybe. No. He ain't as big as he looked. He ain't a bad one. You see him just barely pull that thing under. Of his head, he felt big. How clear that water is where he's fishing. Looks like a little old school devil horse action there. Well, he wasn't going nowhere. Big it. Big it, get out of there. Brandon McMillan no, on the right little. there, another. She just had me all local. wrapped up. So I'm enjoying being here with y'all, but I'm like, I really wouldn't want to be there. <laughs> I'm surprised when I looked at oh. the list, you weren't. That's why we invited I, I, so you. So I did think about it because of the first two events. I mean, Washita and Okeechobee. Two pounder. We caught you before you decided. So no doubt I'll be fishing tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, if you can't get fired up by what you're seeing today, that's yeah, this all awesome. fishing might not be your deal. Wrapped up in them deal, I thought it was a great big one. Tucker Smith. He 
exactly like we thought we'd see fish get caught at Lake Okeechobee. I say that kiddingly, but we do have five or six areas represented on the lake. Uh, we do have some people in the rim ditch and those canals, and then we've got obviously Sam, George, Austin, Cranford down in South Bay. They've kind of nestled in. They had a smaller crowd. A crowd this week is 60 to 80 boats. They said, yeah, our crowd was about six boats. So I'll take oh, that that's all good. day long. Absolutely. We're getting some different looks. We like that. Take a look at our next open event through the course of today. That's coming up from Lake Washita. First time for the Bassmasters there in a good long while. They're in the Washita Mountains of Western Arkansas. Good Lake. They'll be landing in a couple of weeks there. The second stop on the St. Croix Bassmaster opens. Hope you'll join us for that. Meantime, we got big, big things happening at Okeechobee. Tonight on Fox, get ready for some Caitlin Clark in your life as the biggest star in college sports leads third ranked Iowa against Maryland. It all tips off tonight at 8 Eastern on Fox. So there you go, some college hoops to mix into your weekend sports banquet. We are here celebrating the return of live bass fishing. And it is uh, it's come back in a big way here in midwinter here. It doesn't feel like winter down on Lake Okeechobee, Greg Hackney. It's, uh, it's about living up to the expectations we always have for this place. Yeah, sunny Florida, best weather, slick, sunny, and warm. That's the reason people go to Florida. They like the weather, the fish like the weather. It's a great place to be right after we just came out of the polar vortex. <laughs> people have been coming down here for 100 years from up north to fish this time of year in Lake Okeechobee. And once yet again, another reminder of why they do it. This is also one of the lakes. There's probably about eight to nine lakes in the country that have hosted a Bassmaster Elite Series event where the Century Club happened. And back in 2012, Ish Monroe here won with 108 pounds. So Lake Okeechobee puts its name on the list with places like the Kissimmee Chain, like Santee Cooper, Falcon, Falcon yeah. Fork. Um, so many other places that St. Lawrence River, that's weird to say that now with smallmouth, but that's almost a guarantee every time now. And it's almost how drastic the water conditions are this year compared to when Ish caught the 108 pounds for sure. in 2011. That's your leader, Scott Martin, and his, uh, well, it's been a little talk about his, uh, the way he's outfitted his stealth boat this week <laughs> to sort of not be quite so recognizable during the first two days of competition a little bit. Traditional markings that he usually carries. Scott's been incognito this week. His boat's not wrapped yet. He hadn't worn his jersey necessarily on the water. He's had his buff up. He's been fishing in a crowd of 70 people trying to lay low. He's been fishing ultra slow, utilizing a lot of local knowledge, knowing where those outside edges used to be with clump fields and grass areas, and then also using electronics to see how these fish are positioned. Because, Greg, you're saying that. These fish are coming in, you know, with the water levels being 16 feet, it's probably about two, two and a half feet higher than optimal water levels here. They want it to be in that 13 foot range normally. So with it being 16, it's, it's a little higher. So the places these fish pull up, if they want to find four feet of water or three and a half feet of water to spawn, they're having to swim a lot farther away than they used to to move from their staging grounds to their spawning grounds. But on the way, some of these root clumps, some of these reed heads that are broken off and under the surface, that gives them an extra foot or two of height that they can pull up and spawn on top or around those. And Scott said, I've been able to see some of that and other anglers have echoed that sentiment as well. It's a, it's a little bit of hard structure, harder than the mucky bottom in some places for them to spawn on, right. way farther than having to swim another 230, 100, 300 yards. And you'd notice Randall Tharp was actually fishing the bank the actual bank of the lake, and you very seldom ever see that. I think that just goes back to the water level being so high that he can, normally you couldn't even get to the yeah. bank within a half a mile. Oh, Browning. Begging. Not a real begging, but I need him. Good one. 
Oh, you know, I about went in the water. <laughs> I thought he was a dead gum three pounder. I didn't want to swing him because he had me wrapped up when I hit him. Just an old two and a half. Tell you what, though, he's better than the one I don't have in there. Two big time fishing families. Families here, Bo Browning, son of Stephen Browning, Brandon McMillan, the McMillan family. If you were to rename the lake, you got a couple options. You could Lake Martin for the Martin family or Lake McMillan because of the fishing family here. A lot of knowledge in this top 10 group. Two and a half, look how fat that little female is. Pretty white one though. They're coming today. They have kind of had that perfect storm with the cold front earlier in the week and then the weather just gradually getting warmer every day. It's interesting, Greg, a lot of anglers come down to Florida and they're like, oh, I'm in a jacket, it's cold, this isn't good for Florida fishing, I don't like it. Florida strain don't like that, but blah, 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 yeah. Martin, McMillan, Tharp, all the guys who know Okeechobee and know Florida so well said, the only thing that makes these fish move is cold water because everywhere else in the country, the water has to warm up for the spawn to happen. But in Florida, it has to actually cool down it's just for reverse. these females to move and they'll start yeah, spawning Thanksgiving so. through, through April, May. And so they said that cool leading up to it and then you get slick, warm, sunny conditions. He's like, that's, that's the ideal. You know, realistically there, they probably spawn six months out of the year. Really? They started in November and they'll, you know, we've been there as late as May and there were fish still spawning in May. Well, you said, has Scott been catching a lot of fish every day or just a few big ones? I think there were definitely numbers mixed in early. I think yesterday was a little different, but he also caught, he decided to go in a different, whether he's in the same region, he went in a different area yesterday for most of his fish, but he came in here with 15 minutes left before he needed to head back south towards takeoff and caught his eight pounder, his biggest, right where he caught the 10. So there's a specific deal for maybe a big bite, but Scott's not afraid to mix up a little different region cause just because he knows so much about it. And with 10 boats, that's what, much different than 225 on, on room to, to navigate. That's a monster. I mean, absolute tank, male and female. how these electronics have changed the, the face of bass fishing. He's sight fishing with his electronics <laughs> yeah. for bedding bass. You're right. Incredible. Got Martin with an Incredible record over at the FLW, eight wins. It's also incredible to think that he's fished many opens through the years. He's been on the Elite Series since 2001. He is, he's still looking for his first Bass Maps for victory. Second place, Randall Tharp. Randall Tharp certainly has gotten the job done early today. If he can keep this pace up. Thing, something's just not right. Huh?
Well, I'm pretty pleased with what I'm seeing. I've had three roll on it. The last one, just, just two casts ago, was a big one. So there's a lot of fish here. I'm starting to see a lot of activity. I may have to make just a few little adjustments to, they might be getting wise to the vibrating jig here. Well, it's hard to get off the subject of these former elites trying to get back into you. You mentioned, I mean, they, they, they've had a taste of it. They, they know what they're going after here for sure. And uh, it's, it's fascinating. They've made a huge commitment, nine events in this EQ challenge to, to get there. That's, that's how strong the pull is. And there's a, there's a little, uh, Ronnie, explain that, that list we see there. It's talking about the top 20 percentage rates. So of your BASS competition, which includes classic, elite, opens, all, all levels that you fished with BASS, how, what your percentage is for registering a top 20, which 43%, when you're fishing 100 and 200 boat fields, 40, almost 50% of the time you're in the top 20, that, that says something for Randall Tharp and everyone else wasn't too shabby either. Either 30% every third event you're getting in the top uh, 20 and then even 25%. If you end your career, Greg, with a 25% that's ratio, that's our baby. That's, I mean, that's you've a done strong something. percentage. And bad as I hate to say it, I know what they're going through because a couple years ago, Tommy, you know, I was well, yes. in that same position. Mm -hmm. I decided to do, you know, every now and then you do something crazy. <laughs> so. So that's Randall Tharp at the top of that list right there, sort of falling in line with uh, your prediction, Greg, on who's going to prosper among that group this year. Get up in here. I mean, right now, he's start today with running down Mr. Baby. Martin. He had a really strong start this okay, morning. Toby. So. Yes, baby. And he's, he's a competitive a, dude, isn't he? He is, and he's a momentum guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can tell, yeah, but you know, his personality's that way, so. He's got everything going in his direction right now. I just did a couple quick yes. maths. Just want you to know, Mr. Hackney, you fished 222 BASS events. You know, you almost have 100 top 20s, uh, which means you're at 44%. So you can text Randall later and say, I got you by percent. I don't know what adding in this top 10 will do for him, so but uh, yeah, so that just goes to show if Greg Hackney's had such a very, very stellar career, a winner. Randall Tharp is cut from the same cloth. Like you guys are closers. When you get close, you, you know how to win. You win in big moments, and you rarely have a, a poor finish, and as it looks like basically half the time you're in the top 20. He's just mentally a strong guy, you know, and he's, it's in his wheelhouse. He's a power fisherman, you know, so everything right now is lining up for him. In Cranford, Oklahoma, hooked up here. I mean, we're seeing a lot of big bass today. And it's early. Mm. Don't you be doing that. God dang. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Seemed like you might be a bit outgunned there. <laughs> Come here, girl. Come here, girl. Beautiful water. I got her. That's a good one. Woo! Look at that. Barely. It's a three something. They, uh, I think what's going on is I'm still seeing a bunch of fish in here, but I think a lot of those fish have been caught because the ones that swim away, that one I dropped it on it and it just swam over there and ate it. And so obviously this one hadn't been caught yet. So I guess we're just going to have to keep throwing at fish till uh, uh, we find ones that hadn't seen a bait. Well, Austin Cranford and Sam George both fished this area because the crowd was minimal 
and they got a few bites in practice. Boy, has it turned into something more special oh, than they man. ever thought. He only had 17 plus on day one. He really upped the ante yesterday with 23 plus. So for Austin, the uh, the momentum arrow is pointed in the right direction. We have so much more fishing on tap today. Scott Martin still hanging on to that lead there, though not as heavy as it was to start his day. Randall Tharp making a big time charge on Okeechobee. I'm Fox Weather's Kiana Lewis, and this is the Bassmaster Open Final Forecast. We're looking at the weather today out of Lake Okeechobee and Clewiston, Florida. Mostly sunny skies expected with temperatures in the mid-70s. Lake temperatures are going to be in the mid-60s today as well. Now, good luck to everyone out there. Don't forget that you can download the Fox Weather app or stream Fox Weather from your favorite connected TV device. Well, our thanks to Keanu Lewis and the whole Fox Weather team for delivering the, the great news. It's perfect weather, absolutely perfect weather here today for the St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Okeechobee. Presented by Seven. We well, got one limit so far, Matt Adams, about 15 pounds. And Paul Marks is the only one not on the board with a fish. And there he is right there. All right there, a Lake Lanier guy. Mm -hmm. I Great said you hair. tired of tired of beating up guys in Atlanta region of, of Georgia and you just decided to fish nationally. He said, you know, I've done enough around home that I, I want to try to make the Elite Series now. Good for him. A lot of these young guys have such great hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, or they really have just, hair. They're emulating. <laughs> That's a little one. They're emulating the 80s hairstyles to bring them back. It is. It everything just goes in a big circle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keeper. Yet for Scott Martin, he has said both days that patience, though, has been the key. Not giving up on a spot, just waiting him out. In theory, he might need a, a big one or two to hold off Tucker Smith, depending on how Tucker does today. But overall, if he just has a normal Florida bag, he'll be able to hold off Should most of the rest of the top ten, depending on how they do. But he won't Tucker's break the, the wild record. card. We want him to break yeah, the record. Him, yeah. 21 and... Three quarters, they'll get the record. He's spitting up shad. to keep that in his mouth. It's been his Tucker Nate. Golly. Tucker was 713 behind Scott. He was the closest pursuer, so. He's 28. If, yeah, to break the record? Oh, oh yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, 29 mm -hmm. maybe. Tucker, one of the most decorated youth anglers of all time. Three high school, he's a part of three high school national championships. He just won the college championship this past season mm -hmm. at Pickwick. He's been team of the year. Uh, he's Look done how fat he is. well everywhere he's gone. And he even won a million dollar tournament with his partner, Logan Parks, who's now an Elite Series rookie. So they've all, he's just another one in the line and the lineage of Auburn University that's came out of there that's been well prepared. One day away from making it to the Classic this year, too. Came in second place. Uh, got a, beat by Easton yeah. Father in this top ten, Easton yeah. Fothergill. That's the other mark we forgot to mention. Two-time runner-up in the Classic bracket. Yeah. And, he's, and he's lost both of them by just ounces. Mm -hmm. There are four 22-year-olds in our top ten today. Moments ago here with Bo Browning.
And Bo's another one with that same hairstyle. Oh boy. Another old little one. I know he's a keeper, but I just gotta check him. A lot of these really young guys, you may not know their name, but they've been mentored by someone. Obviously, Bo's father's been a professional for a long Big time. Big ones that go to biting eventually. Tucker's mentors, Aaron Martin's. Like, there's a lot of these guys have been taught and ingrained with, hey, you gotta have the desire, you gotta want, you gotta have the want to to make it to the top level. It's not just gonna come easy. But Bo has much better hair than his father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they look like members of the Cincinnati Reds from 1981. They do. <laughs> yeah, and like you said, his opportunity to maybe be the tackle warehouse EQ points leader after the next event, having a top 10 here and then yeah. going home, home to Blake, Washington, going home. that would be. Well, those two fish were earlier from Bo. This, now we're back live with him. Bo Brown and getting it going here, and Bo, of course, a college star from two different universities. We caught up with him yesterday, and let's show you now his Bass Pro Shops top lures. Hey guys, I'm Bo Browning here at Lake Okeechobee. Just wrapped up day two of the tournament. Want to talk to you guys about how I've been catching my fish. I've been getting in these bigger crowds with everybody else, but I'm slowing down behind them, picking up a spinning rod actually throwing a Z-Man bang stick. This is in June bug. It's a stick bait with a little bit of tail on it, with this little bit of skirted tail, and I've got a little bitty 1 8 ounce Z-Man shrooms Nico weight in it. Most of my fish are sitting in little holes and depressions, so I'm throwing it in there, getting down to the bottom quick, and that finesse approach is allowing me to go behind all these guys in these big crowds and pick up fish that they might not have keyed in on. The St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Okeechobee starting the season off here at one of the most iconic bass fishing destinations on the face of the planet. We are not, we are not disappointed. Everything is looking great. A live coverage brought to you by Daiwa. And a much more open water looking place than it has been for the last two days with over 200 boats out there. These 10 anglers who are left on day number three have, uh, have their kind of kind of run of the mill here, their run of the uh, of the premises. Let's get back out to Tucker Smith. We saw the Alabama angler from the Birmingham area just a few minutes ago. For the break, Bo Browning became the second guy to have a limit today. Somehow managed to hook him. It's not too big. It's like three pounds. We saw this pattern and this type of thing 
prevail in the Elite Series event last year and it was kind of open to the eyes. So some of those areas got really pressured. This is a different region of Okeechobee. Um, Has he had I much think that pressure was a two and three quarter. He said that day one, it was just easy. They got him, they got him, him and Paul both caught him quick, both got out of there. Yesterday, a, a little bit more pressure. And if you looked at Kyle Jesse's gallery on Bassmaster.com, he had three fish about noon and one of them was a good one. His afternoon was very key, and I don't know if that's a sun thing. I don't know if that. He said he would love wind to be ripping, and it looks like it's the calmest place on the lake. So wind is the only thing that would help Tucker's bite, in his is in his opinion. I did hear him say earlier that one of the, the fish before that one that he caught was spitting up shad. So he's targeting basically a totally different animal from yeah. a lot of the other guys that are fishing for in spawning areas. Number three. <laughs> A little bigger, but still not big enough to bring in in the afternoon. Another great story, Tommy, is this man right here, Easton Fothergill. We got three Him for and Tucker Smith, back to back, awesome. you know, head to head. I don't know, it's a start. In the college classic bracket just a few months ago, it seems, we in have three, Kansas. But basically zero. Yeah, Milford Lake. Easton from Minnesota. Get five in the box, so that at least make me feel more comfortable, and we can. He's got three fish right now, but this tournament, Tommy, was a spectacle because not only did he find the best spot or two on the lake and get off to a great start every day, what he overcame. So he won Team of the Year, Greg. He was yep. the Angler of the Year, you know, with his partner Nick Dumkey at Montevallo. Best team through the whole season. They get a top five in the national two championship. Miles, miles. But at that championship, he had enormous head pain, migraines. He could not figure out why he couldn't get rid of his head right headache. Shortly up. after the championship realized he had an abscess in his brain, had emergency surgery, was he recovered and was cleared three days before the bracket competition, fishes it and wins the bracket wow. to make the classic and now represent the college series on the open. So the fact that he's even the fishing and standing just, upright right now is, is amazing. I have this big flat around the corner today and we're just gonna keep poking around and you know, it's. I'm seeing, I'm seeing big ones. There's a little bit less than yesterday, but I think with the sun coming up, they'll start showing up. And, you know, it's just, if we can get five like that one I just caught and then two giants, we have a really good bag. So we're on track. It's just, we gotta keep poking around and I think it'll happen. We'll have our opportunities, I think. He's very excited to fish the opens. The perfect timing of qualifying and representing the college series is that we are going to the upper Midwest, the Mississippi River, Wisconsin, you know, across Wisconsin. We're going to Leech Lake in Minnesota. Mm. Leech is his home lake. So for oh, for the years for a Midwesterner to uh, make it and be able to fish the opens, he's gonna have three close to his backyard. Fold in a little classic experience, which is always invaluable as well. So that's big year coming up huge year and mm. go to the classic at his age. Mm. There we go, that's good. Good deep. You good? Paul Marks getting on the board. And you were saying that Paul Marks and uh, Tucker are Noodles roommates. In there for that yes, long ride they back kind of pre-practiced together, to you know, months ago and then Obviously, in practice, breaking up Okeechobee, you know, we're trying to look for a certain pattern that they both desired or whatever, and um, they able to put their heads together and I guess break down a massive body of water a little bit quicker. Which is a whole lot more common these days, and I don't know if Greg Hackney would bump heads with anyone in a positive way, only in a, only in a bump heads in a territorial way. You, you know, there are a lot of guys that do that now that uh, even on the Elite Series that, you know, put their heads together and, you know, here's the deal, you know, you're rooming with three or four guys and one of those guys figures it out if he's honest. You know, fishermen sometimes will not tell all the truth, what? but no, no, yeah. occasionally, occasionally they've been known to not tell the truth, but know that uh, if you can get them to tell you the truth it just helps you to learn you know it's just the learning curve is that much faster when you got four heads thinking here's your top four positions in order Scott Martin on top, but now a two-pound, one-ounce advantage only ahead of Tucker Smith. Scott's still looking for 
The big ones that show up, the good ones. And at Okeechobee, it's not a guarantee, but we kind of, it's not really a tournament until everybody has a limit, especially right, on the right. final day. Once, once Scott gets that baseline limit, we'll see what his lead is and what, what they've cut into it. But, and Scott's a seasoned veteran. He knows, you know, you can tell at the pace he's fishing, he's not in a hurry. It's not like he's expecting to catch a bunch right out of the gate, you know. Last year in the Elite on Okeechobee, Martin started second and he fell to 30th place. So we don't want to see something like that happen again. Yeah, and I'll say that I talked to him about that area he fished day one last year and he said it was just kind of a not going to replenish. Right, now it's right. more widely known, so he didn't even go there this week. Fishing's changed. Would you have ever thought you would have covered a tournament in Florida and a guy was out in, a, in in warm weather out in the middle of the canal just where there was no vegetation at Okeechobee? There we go. Pretty nice one. I think it's crazy how many years and how many bass guys Number have two. driven over because they ruled out the open, deeper water. Let's go. You know? And well, again, when you because suspended fish were so hard to fish for, but now when you can pinpoint them, yeah. You know, before you only could see them when you were over them. Well, now you can see them at, let's call it, some guys looking 200 feet. Yeah. Mm. It's getting to the point where you gotta be that far away, otherwise they know you're there. Right. Well, not so much here. These fish have never, like, yeah. oh, they're yeah. fishing for <laughs> fish that really don't get fished for, so. These fish will soon become the more pressured fish. I will say we saw another angler in here in photo galleries, Matt Messer, who won the Harris chain last fall, um, throwing a buzz bait around some shallow grass and then also flipping lily pad fields. He was fishing the bank with all the, he said there's, if we're worried about vegetation out on Okeechobee, the lake itself, a lot of these anglers who I talked to that were in the rim canal said the, the grass looks great in that region and Matt Messer had a good event here from flipping the bank and, and fishing that kind of stuff. So there's a good population that at least lives in that rim canal. Looks a little more traditional Florida yeah, look right here. That big and he caught gave us the old Okeechobee yeah. look, didn't it? from Alabama already made his day catching that giant <laughs> earlier today. He was he was fired up. I think we were all fired up to see that. Scott Martin, though, started with an almost eight pound lead that is down around a two pound. And it, but as you say, Ronnie Moore, it's not it's not for real. We're, we're not talking apples to apples until oh, everybody real. gets a limit, right? <laughs> it's it's, it's yeah. all unofficial, but we like to prognosticate. You have to fold all that stuff in, but we are following it as closely as we can. So entertaining here on Okeechobee. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Yep, this is it, starting the season out with the Opens. New emphasis, increased emphasis on the Opens this year. Really in the spotlight, this is the St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Okeechobee. Stop number one, three days of fishing. We're down to that final championship day today. We are down to 10 anglers. 10 anglers who hope to be at the top of the points race at the end of nine events. That's a long way off, man. It will take us all the way up to the, to the great north. But take a look at last year's winner, the top nine finishers from last year, and JT Tompkins leading the way. What an absolutely incredible season, Tommy. The fact that JT Tompkins only won by about a dozen points, maybe 15 points over John Garrett. He averaged a 17th place finish. John Garrett averaged an 18th place finish over a full season. Uh, you had to basically average a check to make the top nine, and, and Kyle Patrick obviously in that final event was sweating it, but so many guys, Ben Milliken had a win, Kyle Patrick had a win through the year, Tyler Williams. We're not only gonna see these guys in the Elite Series, we'll see a couple in the Classic as well. We look forward to them. The Elite Series gonna crank up here in about uh, all three weeks time. So uh, we will get to, they'll get 
get their first test That's out there it. against guys like this man right here, Craig Hackney. We'll see how that goes. I was going to text uh, John Garrett and say, hey, you forgot to go to the Open because he is like Sam George. He's been at the Opens for six to seven years and been so close qualifying. It was weird to see him not at the meeting for the first one because he's going to be at a more important meeting in a couple weeks. Yeah, and he's definitely had some heartbreaks. <laughs> Hack, that group averaged 24.8 years old, about five years younger than the previous season. So there's some young guys coming out for you. That's got to be the youngest group ever oh, to qualify. Yeah. One You'd over think. the age of 30. 34 was the oldest angle. How about 18 that? 18-year-old Trey McKinney, youngest ever to qualify for the elites. Soon the average age will be 16, and their parents have to drop them off at the boat ramp. <laughs> it's headed that oh, way, isn't it? <laughs> Get permission to fish the opens. Hey, it's something we've always asked for. We're growing the sport to the younger generation, and they are. Well, and everything is it. lining up for them the information, the phones, the live, the, the new technology. You know, kids yeah. just absorb that so much better than it is harder to teach an old dog new tricks. It is what oh, it is, boy. you know. So true. Uh, it's just set up for them that way. Well, Mark Zona commented to me that it's going through the paces of the college tournament series where you know what to expect, know how to do, and these guys talk to each other, and I think these college guys really band together and, and talk a lot and learn different techniques from different parts of the country. And their, their training is so much better now than it's ever been before, and some of it's information because we're getting it out there so quick for everybody to see. Just saw Eastern Father Gill's fourth keeper going to the live well there. Get back over to Randall Tharp. Had the hot hand early today, that's yeah, for really sure. Did. All right. <laughs> Barely hooked, yes. It's number four. <laughs> Not the one we need, dude, but we'll take her. Let's get back to work. Definitely, it seems he has locked that bladed jig in his hand. At 54, he's the oldest in our top 10. Scott Martin's 48. You're not supposed to say oldest, you're supposed to say wisest. Most experienced? Wisest, yes. <laughs> seasoned. Man, seasoned. Yeah, seasoned. The What's the term they use in the Bible? Too. Well stricken in years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> long, long in tooth. Yeah. Stricken part doesn't sound so well. So <laughs> good. Looks like a Bo Browning for Ariel. He's fishing in an area that guys like Scott Martin and R Randall Tharp said, the most beautiful water on the lake right now. But it is different by two or three degrees than some other regions. And so Holder. it's just one of those things. Yeah, cooler. So. So maybe in a week, Scott said, we are getting to, like, it's popping off, but it's, it's about to go nuts everywhere. Not every region is exactly exploding. There's a few, but a lot more regions are about to explode. Now think about that, 33 pounds leading the first day, and he's like, the lake is really fixing to turn on. <laughs> seen a 10, what was it, a 10-3, a 10-5 for Randall Tharp? 10-3. 10-3, we've seen a 9 12 Scott Martin on day one as well. You know, it's funny, but northern Florida or the central to the northern part produces more fish over 10 than the southern part. But Okeechobee, just so many seven, eight, nine pounders. I mean, Scott had three the first day that were eight or better, yeah. eight plus. Now yeah, think ish. about that. Just when you go fishing, you want to have a day like that. And he had it in a tournament, Damn. you know. That is our top opens weight ever, 33 pounds, two ounces. Whitney Stevens had 32.12 in 2019 on the Harris chain. We got Scott trying to win it wire to wire. Now he's, he's led it wire to wire, but he, beyond that, he has had the biggest weight each and every day, which we haven't seen since the classic last year. You know, we don't really know to... how his mornings have started off the last couple but it seems he's so much slower than everyone else. Yeah. He's you know, day one, hit all his five fish popped in at once. It was like, bam, he's leading. 
I suspect it was slower for him because he kept emphasizing I had to be patient. I had to wait him out, you know, in these post weigh-in interviews. All right, Hackney, speaking of good fishing and in honor of Groundhog Day, the movie. I'd like to catch them on anyways. I mean, the way to jig, chatterbait. I really Hang don't on. like slowing down and fishing that way with that spinning rod, but golly, it's the only way I can be able to get bit. I've caught some flipping, but I mean, heck. No matter how you have to catch them, you just gotta do it. Just do it. That area he was in was a huge player last year in the Elite. Hack, I was gonna ask you if there's a day that you wanted to, re of fishing that you wanted to relive over and over. One come to your mind of your fishing? So, so many days. <laughs> I have been very, very, very fortunate to have some good days on the water and some good days. And, uh, you know, probably a place that I don't, wouldn't want to relive a day either is Cayuga. But also I had a day there the last day where, when I won there that, I mean, it was over in 45 minutes. Yeah, I remember that. You know, and I, I think I won by maybe 14 pounds in that event, but it was just, couldn't have worked out any better. And I was needing that win to, to keep my lead and angler of the year, it was just, that would probably, and I called them the exact the way, my favorite way to catch them, flipping deep grass. I mean, that would be the day, I, that would be Groundhog Day. Well, follow up, to, follow up then, day you want to get a furry rodent in your lap in the pickup truck and drive into, over into the quarry. Is there a day that you wanted to end? Yeah. Probably Cayuga as well. Yeah, oh, so wow. it, the 100, 100%, <laughs> um, I, I mean, I, I've just now got to the point where I could even, want to even talk Fine. about that or don't want to talk about it, but I would. But but it is funny. Fishing's like that. It's a roller coaster. It's the highest of highs. <laughs> and I've seen both ends of the spectrum from the highest of a high to the lowest of lows. So the real Groundhog Day that year of 2014 was happened happened when you clinched Escanaba. that you pretty much had it win at Escanaba because we would wake up like morning after morning and there's no <laughs> fishing today. Three days in a row we never made a cast. It, it took a, us five days to get two days in. Yes. People in the town were getting annoyed with us just hanging around. They kept seeing Golfing. us show up to the, the bumper bumper boats and the bowling alley. We were <laughs> putt putt. It's, I remember you saying you had nightmares about that, waking up and thinking you missed the launch. I, miss, I woke up at like three o'clock in the afternoon because I would nap every day. I'd never nap. <laughs> Browning there. Scott Martin got to feel a little lonely compared to what they've been through the last couple of days with all those lake, all those boats out there on Lake Okeechobee. But they are happy to have this situation here today. Happy to be in the top 10. Of course, we're talking about the Bassmaster Elite Series 2. That gets started about three weeks time, February 24th, 25th. You're going to see coverage of the first stop of the year at Toledo Bend Reservoir, famous Toledo Bend Reservoir down on the border between Louisiana and Texas. That is going to be a good one. Start there. Nine event season. And, uh, two events in Texas. It all starts right here. The 2024 NASCAR season drops a green flag tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern with the clash at the Coliseum. And on February 18th, it's the most iconic day in all of motorsports, the Daytona 500. Dwayne The Rock Johnson serving as Grand Marshal only on Fox about that tomorrow quarter mile track at the LA Coliseum. How do you like that? Drag racing. That's going to be some good <laughs> stuff. That is going to be a serve. Let's go. That is wild and Let's man go. we have seen some wild fish catches this morning as well. Some good classic Okeechobee stuff Greg Hackney. Ahead of time. Ahead like of time. we know the afternoon's going to be the best. That's, that's right. Greg Tharp. Excuse me Randall Tharp. Get up in here. My Matt pick. Adam Stark. Yeah, oh, your pick rounder, to win it all. To, to take it all. Okay, so yes, uh, we need to ask someone else about picks while we're at it. There he is oh. right there. Wow. Mark Zona watching today. Your running buddy here, Mark Zona, has been getting a little excited watching these big fish. I'm, I'm assuming the same is true for you. 
Absolutely, Tommy. And I think one of the most interesting things in this tournament right now, um, it, it's a little bit old school. You look at guys like Randall Tharp and Scott Martin who, you know, have ha had to make adjustments the way we have seen in years past against a lot of new school anglers living in the rim canal, throwing a little jig head minnow. As much as I want to see Greg Hackney commentate an entire tournament with guys doing that, it's nice to see uh, your usual standby of heavy cover on Lake Okeechobee. And I think Greg nailed it. You know, the, the, to see the presence of big females early in the morning, early in the morning, all this water needs to do with the perfect weather conditions that we have right now, when that water just bakes about a degree or two degrees, look, you don't want to manufacture drama, but one of the biggest comebacks we've ever seen on the Bassmaster Elite Series was in the state of Florida this time of year on the Harris chain, and where you say, there is no way the leader is gonna lose a 10 to 12 pound lead. You can fool around and find out on this lake real quick, catch 12 pounds, and you get caught by a guy like Randall Tharp. So I don't think Scott Martin's lead is completely safe like we were talking earlier. I think the deal is too, what you saw this morning with Tharp was a lot of times those females roam around in the morning. They catch them on a moving bait as it warms up during the day. I think that would be the only thing that's going to play to Scott's advantage is that Scott really seems to be targeting spawning fish. And that will happen more in the afternoon than in the morning. You know, it was cool this morning. Maybe those fish were loose. And a lot of those guys that are using their front facing sonar, they're swimming around and they'll start locking down. So the, the, the big ones we've seen so far, Mark Zona, do you, uh, I mean, the, the, the catch rate hourly through the day, as was printed in, in the Bassmaster.com, shows that the noon hour, the 11 o'clock, the noon hour is being prime time, so to speak. Do you think that's going to hold up today, or is that, is that a sliding thing as, as we go through the days? Man, you have to think so. But the other side is what, what a lot of our viewers are not seeing on FS1 right now. If you look at the last two days, areas that a lot of your leaders are in, they're, they're stereotypical areas that we have covered, not throughout the last few times at Lake Okeechobee, they're areas that have played for decades and decades, and you cannot comprehend the pressure that was in areas like Scott Martin is fishing right now. I mean, there was, Ronnie, it's fair to say, there, there was 20 to 40 boats in a lot of these prime backwater areas that we're seeing play throughout the typical Lake Okeechobee where you're like, man, they cannot sustain this pressure. And yet day after day, just like Lake St. Clair, it, it's very bizarre when you get weather conditions like this and you're really like, it, it's just had too much pressure. The lake still produces giant stringers. Yeah, just like you were saying earlier that Scott said a lot of the lake hadn't turned on yet. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Z, we've been talking about the, a lot of the stories going on here, and of course the, the youth movement, which we saw big time on the Bassmaster Elite Series, versus these these former elite pros Go trying on. to make it back into there. Which which one of those storylines uh, is going to capture more of the imagination as we go through this open season? Yes. Mm -hmm. Man, I, you know, I, looking at a lot of the anglers, a lot of the veterans like Randall Tharp that we're looking at right here. I, I heard Hackney talk about it. He, Tharp went on a little That's field a trip like like Greg there. did to live golf here a few years ago. Sure. Hackney fought his way back <laughs> through the season. I, I just think it's very interesting to look at the names like Randall Tharp, a Cliff Pace, you know, guys that, man, they, they, they're legends of bass fishing, trying to fight their way back to the Bassmaster Elite Series. I really think that will be the storyline. Ishman Rowe. I mean, we covered Ishman Rowe winning here on Lake Okeechobee, um, getting off to a great start and riding that wave of momentum. That is taking a look at Randall Tharp live. I'm telling you, man, he's got some meat in the locker right now. Another solid one from Randall Tharp right there. But I think that definitely is the storyline. Randall Tharp putting the pressure on our leader with a seemingly insurmountable lead to start the day, Scott Martin. But this was moments ago with Scott Martin. I mean, a freaking 10 pounder. Now it's a seven. It's giant, bro.
Come here, dude. Come here, bro. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yes. Just one fish at a time, baby. Just, just one fish you, at a time. What'd you just say? Just one fish at a time. Okay, we can do this. Let's put this one in. Put her, I'm gonna put her on uh I'm gonna put her on this side right here. Yeah. That's all I've been doing all week. I watched everybody else catch them on drop shots and stuff, dude. And they're catching whatever. I get about 10 bites a day and they weigh pretty good. That felt good. Just gotta do it four more times, dude. Four more times. That's all we gotta do. Oh man, when I hit him, that that thing was like, okay. Hey, I gotta go back in ninja mode. Hang on. I've been in ninja, I've been in ninja mode all week. We'll see y'all in a minute. Bandito bug, baby. I'm just gonna tell you, all fishermen, this is red alert. Red alert for all fishermen on the planet. Whether you like Guggen baits or not, I'm just gonna tell you, at least buy these. Because this is the absolute must, it's one of them must haves. It's a must have in your boat. I put him in his what, six? Well, there we go with Scott nine, Martin. I, I, I think he feels a little better now. Nine, I yeah, think, uh, Z, would you agree that's a little bit of a turning point for uh, our tournament leader there? Well, Z's missing out. I don't he's know where Z out. went. He he's, left he's, us. He's he can see it. He just can't hear us, I think. But, uh, man, oh, man. I yeah, just... again, momentum. That completely oh. changes the whole momentum yeah, of the day right there. Someone gets within two pounds of Scott, and we're like, uh-oh, and then he catches a six. Now they're eight pounds back. That's just, it is one bite in Florida. Tharp that actually, is a big one. Tharp six-pounder actually gave him a three-pound lead before this fish was brought For in by Scott Martin. 17 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> but he did. He did change leads. About. <laughs> We still need, we, Scott's breaking the record today. He needs to tighten up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got more work to do. That's he does. Sure. He only needs four for 15 with that six pounder. He's, he's, it's not, that's still doable. He must have heard Zona mention the Harris chain. That's, that's what motivated yeah. that catch right there. Just, yeah. that's, that's enough to put the fear of God into anybody. Scott Martin has done so much in the world of bass fishing. Of course, his dad did so much. Nine Angler of the Year titles, all those tournaments won. Can Scott ever run him down? We talked to him yesterday. For me to hold up a blue trophy uh, would, would be unbelievable. You know, my dad's won 19 of them, so <laughs> winning one would be unbelievable, right? But I gotta win like 20 to make it even more unbelievable when your dad has won 19. So am I gonna win 19 Bassmaster Elite Blue Trophies? Uh, I would hope so, but it's probably not gonna happen. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't think that record will ever be broken, just like his nine angle of the years will never be broken as well. This is the St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Okeechobee. Presented by Seven, live coverage sponsored by Daiwa. So happy to have all of that in place. Rolling out some live fishing for you to get started in this year of 2024. It's gonna be a big one. It's gonna be the biggest ever for the uh, St. Croix Bassmaster Opens. Increased emphasis on that this year. So many great storylines. Such a big commitment these anglers have made, the ones who are in the elite qualifying division of it right now. That's the way our standings look right now. Scott Martin, who just caught his first big one a few moments ago and not long, well, right after that, Randall Tharp fired back. Randall Tharp keeping this thing close. Want to take another look at him. That's a big one. Stay hooked up, baby. 
Yes! Yes! Boom! <laughs> That's a good limit fish right there, boys. That thing's pushing six. Look at that. I mean, she was not going to come off. I, that fish boiled on my bait about an hour ago. I remembered the cast. She was not coming off. Thank you, Lord. That's a solid start, man. I'd like to like to cull that sucker by the end of the day. That's the one. That's the one that rolled on it earlier. That's five. That was intense. I'll cover anyone in this sport, forward facing sonar, dock fishing, grass flipping, chatter baiting, crank baiting, doesn't matter. It's cool to see somebody like Randall Tharp up in the thick stuff, throwing a, plinking around with a, a big weight or throwing a jackhammer or something like that. It's, it feels right. No. Nope. Right over to Scott Martin, our leader. I thought he was the big one. I forgot I had mono. I put my, or my fluorocarbon back on. So they had all that stretch. <laughs> Just over like I went, ooh. <laughs> I mean, Scott's definitely doing what he's needing to do. He's just creeping around. Really doing what the Florida strategy is, catch a giant bag on day one and Big protect and it the next one. two days. And he giant has done one, that successfully. I mean, a freaking 10 pounder. Before our break there. See it one more time. No, we seven. waited a long time for this one to show up. It's giant, bro. Come on, dude. Come here, bro. Come on. Come here. Come here. Come here. Just one fish at a time, baby. Just, just one say? fish at a time. What'd you just say? <laughs> just one fish at a time. Mm. Okay, we can do this. Let's put this one in. Put her, I'm gonna put her on a, I'm gonna put her on this side right here. Yeah. All I've been doing all week. I've watched everybody else catch them on drop shots and stuff, dude. And they're catching whatever. I get about 10 bites a day and they weigh pretty good. I felt good. Just gotta do it four more times, dude. Four more times. That's all we gotta do. Oh man, when I hit him, that thing was like, okay. Hey, I gotta go back in ninja mode. Hang on. I've been in ninja, been in ninja mode all week. We'll see y'all in a minute. That one went in as a six pounder for Scott Martin. I think it was all of that, looked to be. I think it's a hero or seven. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I think it's the biggest fish we've seen caught today. I think it is. They start to look more normal in guys' hands when he's caught probably six fish over the last two days over seven over pounds. Over seven, yeah. He gets desensitized yeah. to it no a little. Doubt. Let's get back over to Norman, Oklahoma's. Where at? Krampus. Where at? Where at? Where Little top water action. I mean, Sammy George have been working that in. All right, we're going to throw a prop bait around. All right, that's a good one, too. Only get a All right, well, I guess when it ain't working, so my fiance Cheyenne this morning told me, you're not married yet. Well, I'm not married to the fish either and that dang wacky rig, so we're gonna throw a dang prop bait. Cranford was right uh, while we were at break here. This was a little earlier with Austin Cranford.
He fished the EQs last year, finished 38th. He was one that emphasized how blessed he felt this week that he he said, you know, I can't I can't start with a 140th place finish and you do good the rest of the year and you have an average finish of 30th or 40th, but you can't make up what you lost in the first one. So now he's yeah he started last year 160th at Ufala. I guess seven of the nine guys who advanced from the EQs to the elites were in our top 25 in the first tournament. So hot start was uh, kind of critical. Huh. I think we discussed that earlier, Such. I think that's the whole deal with the group this strong. You know, here's the deal. When you only have 10% that you have to beat, you can have bad tournaments and come back from it. But this group now, you know, you probably realistically to have a shot at that top nine, at least 50%, if not possibly 60% of the group is capable of catching enough to qualify for the elites. Keeper for Sam George. Oh, carbon copies. They're relatively Dang catching God. them everywhere, God. but when Joke. Cranford catches some, Sam catches some. When Sam yeah. catches some, Cranford catches, and they're in the same like that area is turning on at the yeah, same time. Little windows of time. Of course, we're getting close to the magic time. All yeah, the time. like yeah, that middle are. of the day it's period enough. has been the rolling up on 10 o'clock Eastern time, okay. and that's uh, that's kind of when it starts to gin up a little bit. Tucker Smith started the day in second. Third, and he's the, the same poundage back than when he, as when he started. He seems to be catching solid fish today, but his big fish bite is yet to uh, is yet to turn on. I mean, he he caught the second biggest bag of the event, so the first day, 20, yeah. 20 almost twenty eight. Yeah, yeah, twenty seven six, and Matt Adams had twenty seven four. Those were. Them and Scott Martin, who had 33, were the ones over 27. Yeah, Smith, Tharp, Sam George, are the only, and, and Scott Martin are the only anglers to have more than 20 pounds each day. Two pounder. There's one and two. I mean, and two veterans. Now oh, think man. about that in that two box right there. Yeah. How much and, Florida knowledge well, is stacked in those two boxes? They've caught, Two million pounds of bass no, combined no, on this lake in the last for me to decade. Stay. You know, one, once it became clear that a lot of guys were leaving, those calls started happening. But yeah, let's not talk about that. <laughs> wow, what a perfect day. Calm and sunny, that's what the big one's like here. So uh, we just caught our probably biggest fish of the day. I got two of the right ones now, and uh, we probably got a four and a couple twos to get rid of today. But I uh, found found this little area yesterday. Had three bites here; they were all good ones. So we'll just see if we can't get us a bite today. My my bigger fish this tournament uh, have come deeper, which we're in uh, four feet right here. See, just a big spawning bay just on this isolated cover. And these fish are definitely spawning around these reeds. And to me, they've just been reacting to this vibrating jig. And Dude, all, uh, the only real key is I, uh, it's pretty slow, or I'm reeling it pretty slow. And I have to come in contact with, with those reeds. So it's about angles and deflecting it off of that stuff. And if, if you deflect off of a reed and there's one on bed, she's gonna bite most of the time. We really haven't even seen another boat in the background around Tharp, have we? Mm -mm. No, unless they're just covering him or watching him, yeah. Yeah, it just seems like he has totally the area he is to himself. And you know, realistically, four foot deep in Florida, especially at Okeechobee, that's deep. 
for the lake. Matt Adams is up in that region, but he's a mile away at least. And he's more up in the cover. Right. I always love when I hear of a region one of these guys is fishing on a phone call, I'll call another guy and he says he's fishing in the same region. I say, hey, have you seen anybody? He's like, no. no, I haven't seen anybody all week. So it shows you how these regions are small, but you can still get away from people for sure at times. Well, we as fans have mixed interests here. We, nobody, nobody loves a runaway. On the other hand, we want to see the record get broken. We'll see the record so get that's, broken. that's kind of two things going on as we watch Scott Martin. Started out with 33 pounds on day number one, trying to go wire to wire. He's had the biggest bag each of the first two days. Can he keep it up? Lake Okeechobee is a special place. It's the headwaters of the Everglades. It's one of the largest lakes in the country. It's a natural lake. It's not man-made, it's a natural lake. It's a wonderful, wonderful place that we call home. It's a place that many people from around the world come and visit. For habitat, the manatees, the eagles, the kites, they have rights too, and we have to protect this lake. So I'm asking everybody watching this to jump over to Anglers for Lake Okeechobee on Instagram and Facebook. Join our conversation, join our fight. The fishing's still fantastic as you see, but we're losing so much of our fishable yes. water. Every single year we're losing more and more of it. And I'm just really afraid that we're gonna eventually lose it all. So we have to fight our butts off to save this lake. It's worth saving, that's for sure. And again, it's a natural lake. Nobody has the right to destroy it. Tackle Warehouse Doc Talk, Scott Martin there. That was nothing like you, a little more than Doc Talk. That was uh, conjuring up uh, one of the main pillars of bass, which is conservation. A call to action from our tournament leader right there. It's the way you get around if you don't want to particularly be on the water. Do you think that's yeah. Mark Zona? <laughs> that could be. That's why we lost him during I think it's segment. a couple of the elite anglers who tuned in this morning and saw how good it was biting and said, I'm going to be there tomorrow morning after the tournament's done to make sure I can catch some fish. I'm going to have to get you booked on one of those, Greg. I've kind of like the ones with the big wheels. <laughs> yeah, those are, they call those the stole, the short takeoff and landing, the stole planes. That's a big sport now. Air race knowledge coming out. 10 anglers left on this final day. We had 200 plus boats out there for the first two days. No matter how big the playing field, they always seem to be winding up in specific places. Now these anglers have these places to themselves for the most part. No, you should be good. I haven't turned it on. I'm gonna guess probably mid to upper 60s if I had to guess. So, I mean, it's warm, but you know, it was 74 when I got down here and they were eating a frog like crazy. I just, I had a couple fish do it yesterday, but just not, not enough. And I had several not commit. I had a couple fish not commit on a prop bait too. They're painting the tail end, I know that. And, and the, the thing was, they wouldn't even blow up on it. What you, you could see them, they'd be right underneath the prop bait, and you'd see the swirl. So you knew they were just sitting there looking at it. And I'm like, really? Come on, y'all. One of our last Bassmaster Live shows from 2023 featured this guy right here, Easton Fothergill, as he battled his way through the brackets. Strike King College Bassmaster Series uh, gained himself a spot in the Bass Pro Shops Bassmaster Classic. Six weeks earlier, a surgeon drilled into his skull to remove an answer. What a story. I asked him how 
I said, I don't know how an abscess forms. You know, did they give any ex explanation medically on how an abscess could have formed? And he said that they believed that there was some sort of bacteria that got in his mouth and he had like, you know, if you have an open cut in your mouth, that bacteria got in his mouth and it formed an abscess behind his eye. And so he was, you know, a little spooked by that. You don't ever want that to happen, but it was more of a fluke thing. Um, but for the fact that he could recover and study, he said, I got to sit at home with my family and recover for a couple weeks and just look at Google Earth of Milford Lake and prepare for the thing because I couldn't do anything else. Sure helps to be 21 years old when something like that happens. Yes. You think you heal quicker then, Tommy? Like maybe <laughs> <laughs> that slows down with age? Hey, I, yeah, I, I, I have a definite theory about that. You're right. Tucker Smith. Should be a limit. That's the reason our dinner reservations were at 5.30 <laughs> last night. No, you don't but you didn't go to the early bird, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's a cracker barrel type stuff right exactly. there. Exactly. Six anglers with limits now. Randall Tharp's the biggest at 18 and a half pounds. We were, we were prognosticating during the commercial break of what his limit might pop in as. And we said, you know, two sixes and two three and changes, and it would be right there around that 19 mm -hmm. pound mark. So not too far. Yeah, he's not too far off. He's probably he closer to 20, 20 yeah. than he is right. 18. If he thinks he is 18 and 19, then he definitely has yeah. closer I swear to 20. To you. you come look at the scale. <laughs> I wish it was bigger. <laughs> I wonder, did Tucker say anything about like he's able to target bigger the bigger fish the with his front facing sonar? And he he's said, actually sees mm, the bigger ones. He said it was it was hard to figure out um, an area to pick. There's a lot of places in the Rim Canal that have fish, but he said there's a lot of trash fish and a lot of different species. He said he can tell difference, but um, si they're so tight to the bottom. Some of these, it's hard to tell. Step right here. I've been using this a lot. It's scent. It's got a little, it's got different colors. This is the blue one, which works obviously good for the black and blue. And it helps show it up on the sonar a little bit too. But when they bite it, they hold on to it good. And it's real pasty, so it stays on there good. So you can actually see it better on the Yeah, yeah, it's got it's got something in it that gives it a little brighter return so you can fine-tune your bait a little bit. smelled it. Just a little dude. He didn't look that little. People are ordering that stuff right now. Yeah. <laughs> Told you it works. Just a little one though. But you have to kind of, I mean, he didn't look all that. Like he was pulling out lip balm there, Hack. I don't remember. Did he say exactly what that was? It's called hmm. bait pop. Bait yeah. pop. He didn't mind getting it on his hand. No, I don't like kind of that kind of stuff on my hands. <laughs> Here's Paul Marks. Haven't checked in with him in a while. The angler from Georgia, Lake Lanier area. 23 years old. You know, you'll probably get ready. You'll see even more of this at the next one at, uh, at Washita. This that's going to play yeah. a oh, gosh, huge yeah. factor. Mm. Might keep. I could see just like we're seeing a guy chatterbaiting, a guy flipping, frogging. There we'll see forward facing in deep water, but we'll see guys maybe fishing grass. We'll see guys cranking, get on a good maybe cranking bite, depending on the next two weeks of weather doing Arkansas. But overall, it should still, yeah, you're, it, it should be a predominant deal. Probably jerk bait play a factor there too. 
service stuff. Looks like maybe Tucker has found the one he's looking for. Watch out. This one's a jumper. Some fans on the levee. Mm -hmm. I mean, just screaming and hollering. There's one good one. That's gonna be an upgrade right there for Tucker Smith. Never gonna wave his arms and be too loud about it, but slowly grow in a bigger bag every single day of competition, especially after pressure is on set. That one there moved him into second place, which is where he started this day. So yeah, some good progress right there and more to come for all of our 10 when we return. This is the St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Okeechobee. So glad you're with us this morning on Bassmaster Live. Well, it's been a long four months, but in the off season, we're ready for the real thing and we have certainly had a big dose of that for you today. Presented by Seven, of course, it's the St. Croix Bassmaster Open. One big thing we talk about, Randall Tharp, Brandon McMillan, Scott Martin, all knowing Lake Okeechobee so well, but you hear that last interview we had last segment with Scott Martin talking about we need to protect this place and some different things, hurricanes, spraying grass with chemicals, and also high water. And this is what Scott had explained. If you look at this graph, this is the, the depth of water at Okeechobee. The lake level's at 16.3, and if you look at it, he said 12, 12 to 13 is the optimal for grass growth. If the lake is at 12 to 13 feet, grass can grow well. If the lake is at 14 to 15 feet, it can maintain and maybe not be growing and thriving, but it'll stay at its level. If it's over 16 feet, which it's at 16.3 right now, grass cannot grow well at all and it will not maintain. It will start to die and decay. And so you start to lose some vegetation in areas with this sustained high water for so long. And so all those factors, past storms and hurricanes, higher water consistently, and obviously spraying anything that is alive has you know, eliminated a lot of vegetation on this lake and it's changed it. A lot of these places that used to be matted up vegetation are just reeds or different things like that. So water level is huge, but to get good grass and to get growing grass, that lake needs to come down just a little bit. And so that is what Scott Martin and many others are trying to get enacted is release some of that water out to the Gulf, out to the to the oceans, to the Everglades, and allow Lake Okeechobee to maintain that 12 to 13. Um, because we've we've been here when it was 10 to 11, and it sure. was kind of a little lower and mm -hmm. a little dangerous. And we've been here now at 16, and it's you know uh, it's changed a lot. It's been high before, but never this long. It's almost like maybe going on two years now. Yes. It's been 14 or above. Begging, big one. Yeah. Big one. Come here, baby. Stay down. God, mod. Come back here. Come back. Come back. Get your butt in here. That's two of the right ones I need. Let's do. I'm gonna stop the, the boat real quick. That's the ugliest landing job I've ever seen in my life. Tripping and falling through the boat. Oh my goodness. Sinko. That's the that bitters uh, sinko. I about tripped and fell in the lake.
five nine. Mm. I thought she was bigger than that when I had her. She fought like a truck. You mentioned two of the right size. That's one five nine, I believe he said. Two of the right ones. The other one's at six fifteen, leading for Phoenix Post Big Bass. He's got biggest here it bag is right here. And a half. This was or this was about an hour ago. Day one, he was third place with 27 plus pounds, and he had a bunch of six pounders on his bass track early. You know, just kind of a slow grind, but he's just coming on. They still got plenty of time, and it's like you said, Tommy, it's prime time, so prime time. rolling up on it for sure. Well, you think about he prime catches time. 27 pounds on day one. On TV's better than. Uh, you know, it's it looks like fresh fish that's pushed in. Backwater pond, I'm up at Eagle Bay. It's a, it's a spot that I found when I was trying to get away from the crowd. Uh, you know, we had high winds and big crowds around every spot that I found all week long. So getting away from the wind, found this backwater area. Haven't really fished this. I fished it yesterday thinking that there would be some fish in here and didn't get bit here. Um, so, you know, that, that's a good sign there. We're not but 50 yards into it, and we've got quite a bit of it left. So, I mean, there's, there's enough males in here. There should be some females showing up anytime. There's a bunch of males. I probably caught 30 males yesterday. He only had 13 pounds yesterday. Uh, that's, what the, that's what I was alluding to before he started, was he catched 27 pounds on day one, which, Males and females, so far, if you don't know, males run smaller than females. Dead, slick, calm. It's beautiful right now. So he weighs in five females, big bass, they ought day to eat one. As the day goes to this water starts warming up, they ought to really eat. All males yesterday for 13 pounds, and he has two females today that'll almost equal 13 pounds on their own. So this could be more on tracking on his day one weight over over 25. Fishing painfully slow. This and historically is not my style, in Florida, but... the males are even smaller than they are other parts of the country. You know, we, we go places that you can catch 20 pounds of males, four pounders, but in Florida, it's typically that the male, the buck is a pound to two pounds and the female is seven pounds. There's always that big deficit where, you know, we won't see that as much next week in Louisiana. There, there will be four and five pound male fish. But in Florida, it's always tiny. Cause you know, we have a lot of tournaments in Florida where in the past, if you don't hit it right, it's that one big bite that makes the whole event. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll end up with either 10 pounds or 18, depending on if you got that seven or eight pound bite or not. Well, on day one, the average fish was a little bit over two and a half pounds. Yesterday, it was two and three quarters. It went up a little bit and they, they caught a little better. Uh, 151 limits, about 20 more than the day before. Yeah, Florida's very unique that the big I fish are so fish much here, bigger than the average keeper. You know, the average keeper is three pounds, four pounds. Average is smaller than the big fish. All those Toho tournaments run the same way, too. Yeah. Of course, yeah. same river. Yeah. Scott Martin doubled the average. His day one was 6'6 six, six average. Okay. Well, I've got one good fish right now. So the way I look at it, I've got one fish. Scott started the day with an eight pound lead over Tucker Smith. Now, Tucker's still in second as it stands right now. <clears throat> Have you ever won a tournament on one great day? Uh, not a Bassmaster, but yes, I have won one on a one great day. Or it got me in position to win. Right, well. But, pro but probably that means some, we, I mean, we, we saw well, Shaw Grisby yeah, do that, that so many times, catch 30 pounds the first day right. and back and a cold it. front would come through and six pound on the death the rest of the week and win because you would have those big swings of weather in Florida that you'd have a 33 pound day and then a back it up with a six pound day. I've 
believe I've been there, or I, except for Scott Martin, I was there for Whitney Stevens, I was there for AJ Slagona's big bags, and it was one of those mentalities. These guys are like, I just gotta, I just gotta protect this the next two days because it's so valuable yeah, historically to catch over 30 pounds, but in Florida, where you could fall off the map and catch seven pounds the next day. If you could make that a 15 pound bag the next two days and you have 60 plus pounds for three days, they're gonna have to consistently beat you or have a magical day themselves. You know, Florida is so humbling and because of that same situation, one day you feel like, well, I've got it figured out. You know everything. And then the next day it's like, I have no idea what happened. I mean, they are, they're so nomadic. They, these big flat areas, there's not, it's not like they're holding on ledges and stuff like that. They're just roaming and all, there's a thousand acres around Scott right now that's exactly the same. You know, and they just, those big schools of fish just swim around. That's what Logan Latusa, he had a, a week day one, day day two, he catches two nine pounders. He had he had two fish for three pounds, right. he catches 31, and then he has four for six pounds on the final day. So he had 10 pounds for two days and 31 for another day. That was in the fall though. Five limits uh, in the bag for Five of our 10 competitors right now. Scott Martin, our leader, not one of those. He's still stuck on four fish right now. The big one can certainly change the complexion of his tournament. We'll see if he can get that done when we come back. Tonight on Fox, get ready for some Caitlin Clark in your life as the biggest star in college sports leads third-ranked Iowa against Maryland. It all tips off tonight at 8 Eastern on Fox. Meanwhile, here in Florida, we are right in the middle of the St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Okeechobee, presented by Seven. Live coverage sponsored by Daiwa. Appreciate that. We love some live bass fishing, especially when we had been on a diet without it for about four months now. We are loving it. We got a big, the Opens, a lot more emphasis on the Opens this year. A great schedule. As we take a look at it right now, there's Lake Okeechobee number one and uh, boy we were all over this this half of the country that is for sure yeah the fact Tommy, that we get to go from florida to arkansas will be in alabama south carolina twice we'll be up in minnesota and wisconsin you'll get to see oklahoma as well you'll get to see so many different bodies of water and i'm really looking forward to the schedule as soon as we announced it there were a couple places we hadn't been in a long time or ever leech lake being one of those and wachita we hadn't been there in over 20 years and then you see some of the iconic places like santee cooper and okeechobee on the schedule again and some places like mississippi river that just show you something you don't see anywhere else but i'm really excited about that northern that midwestern swing with Leech Lake and Mississippi River within yeah. a month's time frame. That'll be fun for uh, the viewers at home as well. Good summertime locations. Greg Hackney, were you in, were you to enter the EQs this year? <laughs> what would be the place you'd be looking for the most, uh, excluding Okeechobee? <laughs> okay, I'll six to say, Tommy, right now, <laughs> right I here, just think I want to be on Okeechobee. <laughs> uh, but if you look at the whole list, and I, I have a soft spot for Lake Washita because- You were the last winner there. I was the last winner there, but it was also one of my home bodies of water growing up in Arkansas. But but man, Santee Cooper, if I could only fish one place from now on, it would be hard for Santee Cooper not to be on that list. The fish size, much like Okeechobee. I mean, honestly, and the other thing, these are all big fisheries. Gonna spread everybody out because the opens are a bigger field than the elites. So a lot of times, you, even at Okeechobee, you've seen crowds, but a lot of these fisheries, you can win in any part of them and guys will be miles apart, which, you know, kind of gives it a more of an even playing field. And Tommy, we'll have to watch. We're, we're on pace to break the all-time weight record for the Opens today if we right. can get over 80 pounds and 13 ounces or so for Scott Martin or anybody else. We got to keep an eye on Lake St. Clair could put its name in the top five for three days. You could catch 25 pounds a day there and, and be able to get, you know, in the top five all time. Everybody always gets up for Lake St. Clair. That's a great, great destination. Now, if the fishing's Whoa. not your thing, maybe uh, maybe whatever this sport is called. There's is. Tucker's cheering crowd <laughs> is that? Oh, they're just leaving now. They're, okay, he must be <laughs> making a move. I don't know what is, is that a long levy running? for him to hold? That's a long levy. I thought levy. maybe that was Z, just excited about bass fishing. <laughs> I going mean, you right. know, what? Just responds with a giant wheelie. Get back out to Tucker Smith. Oh, actually, he's still there. We hope his crowd's still there. Cheer him on there. Tucker hanging in there in second place. He has had a great tournament here.
Well, he's definitely a very composed angler for his age. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he handles the pressure like a seasoned veteran. And been doing it since high school. Multiple national championships. Seems like a very calm angler. Very calm. Poised. Ate it to his gut. Almost. Little fat one. And he has that stereotypical hairstyle. Yeah. That that oh man, they're they are running that. I don't know what you call that. We'll call it the flare. The flare? The, the flare. It's the boat, it probably lays flatter, but after running your boat 70 miles an hour, it probably flares out in the back a little bit, you know? But it, the thickness but he's got the, of it. <laughs> it's so it's thick. Two, it's a big tuft two, in the front and the bangs. <laughs> style lately. Such, did you wear your hair like that at that age? No, I did not. <laughs> I have very long hair as a youth. Started cutting it off. You like it a little long in the back? Short Never had a mullet. Room. I'll say yeah. if my dad wore a hat, his would flare out like that. His mullet would pretty, it would, it wouldn't go straight down. It would, it would tuffed out. Have a little wheel. To yeah. It. Yeah. Wheeling out. Let's get from one Al Alabama angler to another. Sam George. Athens, Alabama. I got her. So there's limit fish. This one might have. Eight with a limit, only the two locals do not have limits, Martin and McMillan. Is McMillan on the south end of the lake? He has been, uh, are you talking about overall or uh, this current moment? No, to the, just today. Let me see today. He has been in between Kings Bar and, and the North Shore region. He's been in between that, you know, 10 house area throughout the week, and it looks like he is the, in that same general vicinity. Bo Browning's not far from him. They're, they're two are kind of clustered there a little bit. There we go. Another one. Horse Taman on the Seaguar Tatsu. Stuff so strong. Just throwing 12 pound. It's unbelievable stuff it'll pull in. to see Paul Mark's introduction to Bassmaster Live a few years ago, Tommy. I believe it was 2020 uh, or 2021 at Lake Hartwell right in the fall. Three, he wasn't, we got to see him. He was kind of thick, but he was real short. I do believe. During his school days, for sure, right? Yeah, that would have been, he would have been maybe 20 if yeah, he's 23 now, yeah. Yet, yeah. Which I don't think, he's not a college angler. He's just buddies with college anglers. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. 
23 years old now, comes from Cumming, Georgia. Yeah, 2022, sorry, I misspoke. Two years ago we saw him, he got fifth at Lake Hartwell, which is the same time frame of October, roughly, that will be there this year for the EQ. So That'll be the final EQ. That'll be the, that'll be the last reckoning. Probably be another one of those events where it'll be some diversity in that the majority will be doing exactly what they're doing right now, but there will be a handful of guys doing some other stuff there. We'll see guys catch 20 pounds of largemouth one day and maybe bring in eight pounds of spotted bass the next day. Just the And then you'll see the guys days. who, like, it's getting to the point, just like Champlain up north, it used to be you could win with largemouth or you could do mixed bags, and now it's you have to win almost all with smallmouth. And then the last time we were at Lake Hartwell, Tristan McCormick won that event on all spotted bass. And it was equitable weight to Sam Rayburn the week prior. You know, right. 45 pounds for three days, 15 pounds a day for spotted bass. Well, we are rolling along through the morning here. Getting yeah. close to the halfway point in our day. That'll be about 11 o'clock local time. A few minutes away. Boy, we have seen some nice ones coming out today. Scott Martin took him a while to get his first night. nice one in the boat. He is our leader and has led every day and has outfished everyone every single day here, too. Yes, baby. The 2024 NASCAR season drops the green flag tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern with the clash at the Coliseum. On February 18th, it's the most iconic day in all of motorsports. Daytona 500 with Dwayne The Rock Johnson serving as Grand Marshal, only on Fox. Quarter mile track inside the LA Coliseum. That is something else. This man is something else. At 84 years of age, he's in the he was in the field to start on Monday. Fished full two days. The one and only Guy Aker. Just a, one of the iron men of bass fishing. Won his first event there at Rayburn in, at the age of 54. That was an important open for him. Also, when Roland Martin won the first, this is a little bit of trivia, won the first Bassmaster event at Lake Okeechobee, man who finished second was Guy A. Wow. How wow. about that? Great to see Guy here. Is that North Carolina staple? As a kid who grew up in North Carolina, Guy Aker was a name you, oh, you heard early and often. He has been a great uh, ambassador for the sport of fishing. For he sure. definitely has. Got to be in the top five of anglers all time for tournaments fish, 315. Oh, we were talking absolutely. about Rick Clun is 500th event coming up soon. Bernie Schultz is at 363, something mm -hmm. like that. Charlie Hartley is at 250. There's Greg Hackney's at 222. Not to age you, Greg. You fished a lot in the last 20 years. Wow, Ronnie, <laughs> it sounds so bad when you say it. <laughs> but when you look at your results, it sounds so good. I need to up my percentage a little bit. I was a little disappointed. My percentage needs to be a hair better. Just, yeah, I expect it this year. Ten tournament anglers left out here today after two days of competition. Thursday and Friday. Is Scott the only one without a limit? Uh, McMillan doesn't have them. Scott and yeah, the two locals are the only ones without a limit. a little limit. nippy today. Four for ten right now for Scott with six to I've seven of that being one. A couple one. of these fish pick it up and just not commit to it. A lot of it probably water temperature, it should get better as the day goes on. Two drastic styles there in those two boxes. Similar technology usage as well, though. Oh, like, yeah. you know, like they're both using it, but to target but different fish. Yeah, it's one's in four feet of water like and one's in 12. Highs and, I mean, uh, cattail clumps under the water right there. These fish are swimming around it.
Got it. It's a big one. No, it's not a big one. Dang it. Why do I keep saying big one? <laughs> I've done this all week. <laughs> I ain't caught a fish that size yet. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Golly. I mean, I hadn't even caught fish this size. All right, that's a limit. It's weird to see him put it in the live well, too. When he's been putting that's five, right? Eight. Okay. 25 and 33 in there. Mm. There's another one in there. That's obviously a little male. But a lot, you know, I hadn't fished this little zone. We need to probably move on out of here and get over to where I've been fishing. I mean, this is the area, but the males I was catching in practice, uh, in the tournament, like if I set the hook on a fish like that, it was two and a half, three pounders. I didn't catch, I literally didn't catch any fish that size. But a lot of people did in here. I think the deal was I just got lucky and found the good little zone where there was a better grade of fish, so. I need to um, get back over where I was catching them. But that's a limit. I don't know, about 10 pounds, 11 pounds. All right. Let's see what happens. We've been talking about it all through our broadcast. Uh, two things we're following here is our our uh, ex elite anglers trying to fish their way back in, and, and the talent we have amongst our young anglers uh, here on the Bass Bassmaster, the the Opens and the Elite Series. We certainly saw one of the new bright lights out there running more in the form of. Uh, Kyoya Fujita. Yeah, Kyoya Fujita was a rookie last year in the Bassmaster Elite Series, and what a start he has had to his career. Nine top 20 finishes so far, six top 10 finishes, two third place finishes last year in the Elite Series alone at Murray and St. Lawrence River. He had a second place finish in our second event at Lake Seminole to another rookie, Joey Sefuentes. And then finally, eight events into his Elite Series career, he got off the schneid and won his first Elite Series event. Tommy, he's got 15 or, or it says 14 Bassmaster events, 15 counting this week. He struggled this week by far his worst ever, mm -hmm. but nine top 20s and 15 events. He's, he's got a Greg Hagney percentage going around there, so that's a great start for him. Young angler. He's fishing all nine opens and all nine elite series. I think he's learning a lot more about different styles of fishing by doing so, having 19 Bassmaster events this year for him. Definitely will make him more well-rounded to see the whole country multiple times. At that age, that's the best thing you can do is... For sure. I, I, it's the old adage, you still can't beat time on the water. Mm -hmm. It's still something that everybody that excels you know, did it at least a young age anyway. There's a couple Finished. more of our youngsters right there. Montevallo schoolmates, Bo Browning and Easton Fothergill. It's, it's a big advertisement for Montevallo's bass Shoot. fishing program here today. Not to mention, Tommy, they win the first college event of the year last week at Lake Murray, and I believe they got second and third or second and fourth yesterday at Clarks Hill to wrap wow. up the second college event. So people from their school it's a it's the hot spot to be but I did pose that I said you guys are ninth and tenth to start the day I'm not saying you can't win the event go out and try to win the event but at least be the highest Montevallo finishing angler in this open <laughs> and Bo and Easton their their roommates they're like yeah I'm gonna I just want to beat one guy tomorrow at least you know well and as far as that spending time on the water I know Bo Browning fishes five or six days a week <laughs> and has for the last five years mm. Like, he definitely puts his time in. That's what Easton chose. Easton and his partner, Nick Dumpke, both fished in high school together in Minnesota. They both decided to go to college at Montevallo, and they did so because being from Minnesota, they wanted to expose themselves to the southeast and moving to Alabama right there at Lay Lake, be able to fish those bodies of water has taught them so much, plus what they already knew from Wisconsin, Minnesota region. Let's get back over to Paul Marks. Georgia angler, our lone Georgia angler in the mix today.
probably two that you'll see work together all year. You'll help. For sure. Wouldn't be surprised to see them live next or two weeks from now. Keeper there for Paul. Helps the cause there on the move right now is Tucker Smith. Gonna find something, another place where he can catch a giant or two. A little more fishing for you coming up on FS1 and here at Lake Okeechobee, so don't go away. St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Okeechobee, presented by Seven Reels, is sponsored by Mercury. By Power Pole. And by Progressive Insurance. A great morning so far. We knew this was a much anticipated, well, of course it is. It's our first Bassmaster Live of the Year. Much anticipated. And hey, when we start a new year, we like to look back at what's thrilled us in the past. Let's listen. I know it is. Oh, it's a big bass. It's a big one. Oh, man. Stay hooked up, baby. Stay hooked up. Look at there. Whoa. Come here. Come here. Whoa. Whoa. That's what I'm talking about. Whoa. There you go. I thought there was an outside chance that we might get to see a clip of this. Godzilla ain't got nothing on me right now. Oh, yes. Who is that? One of the most <laughs> iconic fish catches in bass fishing history, and it's going to be a 20th anniversary of it in a few months. That's crazy. 20 is that ago, right, Greg? the 20th anniversary of that? What do, you, what do your kids say? When they, have they seen this? <laughs> so I just recently, somebody put this clip on their Instagram, and uh, so I sh showed it to my, my, all my older children have seen it, but my younger daughter, my youngest, Sarah, she's 12, and... Uh, she just shook her head the whole time and goes, who is that? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I don't know who it is. Oh, that's, that's a, a little different composure level from what we saw with Tucker Smith earlier. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, you were... this guy with this fish catch. <laughs> this guy hey. was bringing it. I <laughs> mean, Matt Adams explained it. Matt Adams said, I played high level baseball other than just being in the major league, you know, major leagues, but bass fishing unlocks something with me. It looks like it unlocks something with you too, Greg. There's wow. the bicycling equivalent of that catch right there. <laughs> I mean, bringing it all the way. I could see Ronnie right there. It is. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> just going for a stroll, you know. I might even just fire up an electronic motor. I don't even want to pedal sometimes. Yeah, he's he's, he's acting like that's not an electric bike, right? Yeah, I was there. thinking he was fixing a. We were fixing to see him wheelie. <laughs> oh, exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Hit that thing into overdrive. I've been known to to mess up the English language and and say words backwards when I catch a big one. I don't catch big ones often, but when I have once in a while, I'll mess up my I'll, I'll lose my mind. Understandable, understandable. <laughs> it's here. It's here right there. They're everywhere. Wow. Greg, what are we looking at right there? For It's so, a perspective mode. But. Yeah, he has it in perspective mode. So that's the fish in the clump of weeds that he's fishing. And you know, some of that stuff, what's cool about it, it's not emergent. It's not coming out of the water. He's not actually seeing the, the uh, you know, the weeds with his eyes. He's actually just seeing them on, with his front pacing sonar. And what that means for yeah, people who are not familiar with back. it, he actually, you turn the transducer over and it's, you see more 3D, oh, okay. where like probably yeah, Tucker and uh, is his is more traditional. Yeah, she's up and down. around. See how she's looking at it to see it. This that's is great for shallow. Water. Yeah, that's a shallow water deal. Yeah. The other deal is more for the deeper water. And you'll see guys like Vegeta that have 14 I mean, transducers like turned in every 12. angle. But I could wow. be wrong. Could be a four pounder, dude. I, I don't. He said he thinks this. I one remember could be a seeing a fish this size, and I, and yeah, I caught like it was 9-12. I kept saying, it looks like oh, a look blimp. At it's the other motion. There's another little swimming around. But that really bright spot, that's the sharper turn. That is the bass. And then there's the dark spot right there, the canopy of the reeds there's that are laid right over or, or shorter. And you can tell how they're circling. They're everywhere. That is on the screen of our leader, Scott Martin. Swimming away a little bit. Up. We saw this with Steve Kennedy at Okeechobee last year caught a couple two-pounders that were swimming. He said, look, I think that's a small one. 
And there he's our unofficial results so far. The day is still, well, we're just about to the halfway point of the day right now. And Scott Martin hanging on to that lead, but it was eight pounds to start. It's been uh, you know, defaced a little bit by Tucker Smith for sure. Randall Tharp has made a big run early in the day. Matt Adams, we saw him catch a good one. All the rest of our 10, we know we talk about, you know, because you talk about who's going to win this tournament, but those 10 are winners right there. I can tell you right now in this uh, EQ, this uh, elite qualification race that's nine events long in St. Croix Bassmaster Open. So our, our congrats to all those guys. The camera coverage is a bonus for sponsors who are trusting you to make the most of your media footprint when you go to the opens level. So camera coverage is awesome, but yeah, escaping Florida with a top 10, Oof. and now you are in prime position. If it was to end today, I'm in the Elite Series. So you wanna stay in that race. Easier said than done. For sure. And I'll say last year's start was a little bit different. We started in Alabama at Eufaula, which it's not North Alabama, it is South Alabama. Those fish were even trying to make a push to the bank and it was the first few days of March. The weather though, it was a two day event shortened with high winds and bad weather. That throws a whole loop into your three day plan of what you expect. Well, we're getting ready to ride off into the, uh, well, hopefully not into the canal here. <laughs> as far as our FS1 coverage goes, it's been in extreme pleasure to bring you some live bass fishing to start the year off 2024 with the Bass Masters. Yes. Again, congratulations to all our anglers for giving us all Let's the go. thrills we expect. We demand when we go to Lake Okeechobee. It did not disappoint this time around and there's more to be decided here. We'll be back with coverage all afternoon right. on uh, Bassmaster.com, the yeah. uh, Fox Digital platforms. To be get up in here, you can find it there. Okeechobee, right, right, right up right to right weigh there. in. They're going to be checking in at the lock when we end yes, the show. Well, you know, Great this people. afternoon there's going to be some fireworks. Oh, we just absolutely. now get the prime time, so it's going to get good. Absolutely. Weigh in starts at three Eastern time. Next time we see you here on FS1, we'll be at Lake Washita in Arkansas for the final day of Stop Two. BASS presentation. Bass Live kicking it up again for the afternoon session here. Number one stop of the year for Bassmaster Live. That's the St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Okeechobee, and we have had a show put on this morning. We started with 200 plus boats. We are down to 10. Anglers left. Going for the points. Going for the win. You win and you're in for the Bassmaster Classic, but the points for all of these. Uh, EQ, and they are all EQ qualifiers, or hopefuls anyway. Got him. Big and dude, giant one. And there's the man giant who started one, with the lead, Scott Martin, yeah, yeah. of course, the native down here. Started with an eight pound lead, had a slow start to his morning, but uh, later in the morning, it picked up. Just one fish at a time, baby. Just say? one what fish you, at a time. What did you just, say? just one fish at a time. Mm. That felt good. Well, that got him back in the game, though. Other big ones landed by the likes of this man right here, Matt Adams, big giant early in the day. And now we want to show you something that happened while we were away. It's been an hour. Since we uh, signed off with FS1, we're signing back on now, but in that hour, as you can imagine, this being Okeechobee, certain things took place, certain things came to pass. We'll take a look at this earlier with Scott Martin. Well, momentarily, we'll take a look at that with Scott Martin. We, we want to create more suspense. We, we want to, yeah, there. yeah. There we go. Oh, hold on, here we go. No, this is this is live. We'll show you that. Oh, I can tell you, it's we want to uh, keep them here for longer for the afternoon. We're going to save it for just a few minutes. But that is your leader right now, Scott Martin. 
get uh, another one pounder. Yeah. So hopefully find another big, big bass. It's good conditions. I think everybody's going to catch them though. <clears throat> Here we go. As promised, what happened? Got him. Not the big one, dude. A few minutes ago. No, not a big, big one, but it's a good one. That helps by like a pound. Every pound counts. No. Yep. That's that pretty was awesome when you catch a two Maybe a solid cull. Yeah, because yeah, he had a limit, but. He had a couple yeah. really small fish. Pounder. There's that and more that took place over the last hour. We will keep that coming as soon as it becomes ready to roll out. Meanwhile, let's get over to Eastern Fothergill, Minnesota. Big one, giant. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh my god. I finally got her. Holy crap. He walked over to a bait caster. He did. Maybe he's not used to quite such a tussle in Minnesota. <laughs> and he said finally got her to bite. He either has been looking at that fish with forward facing sonar yeah. or he actually being able to see. Holy crap. Bed Come fish. here. Oh my God. Come here. Oh. A, bit of a, a bit of a slaunch. Oh Ooh. my gosh. That's a really, <sighs> really big fish. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Kid is a natural. Oh my god. Power shot with fat baby finesse. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. I think that's bigger than the one I caught yesterday. How big, Greg? Nine. Has to be close. Yeah, it looks a whole of that for sure. <laughs> yeah, it has to be right at nine. We'll wait and find Maybe out. I got to change. Oh, he better. said he's got to know. He's going to weigh it. See, oh. these rowdy college kids, they, 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 they paint the picture for us. Such loves those know. guys. Love them. Holy crap. Could be his biggest ever. I don't know what his. We finally got a real one. That's a heck of a coal, too. How about this for a coal? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> See how big. Holy moly, that's a giant. Could be the second double digit of the week, Could maybe. Be. Nine bounder. Wow. Beat my PB from yesterday. It was his that? personal vest. You're right, Ryan. Bounder. He's just down in Florida on vacation, just having mm. a big time. Just college. Road trip, college life. That's incredible. Just, you want to talk about winning some of the biggest tournaments you've ever won? Uh -oh. Okay. Are we fixing to see another nine pounds? We're, we're going to see something that happened. Oh, so wow. I, yeah. Looks like it could be. Wow. Call me crazy. 
but we just caught a monster dude thank you lord that's Don't a blessing about dude. what just happened scott i've been on this fish for an hour I caught the male away to pound that's a nine pounder another giant one guys i could see it on the panoptics i kept saying dude it's a big one. it's a big one and i just kept and kept and kept and i almost gave up on it yeah, I love the I love I love this lake, man. <laughs> Whew. We're not done. We got to keep going. But that's uh that's what we needed right there, buddy. That's what we needed. Oh my gosh. Dude. Yo. Dude. Hey, talk about where she was when she was doing on that panel. So you can see all this the stuff here is roots of the cattails you don't see. Here's some fish swimming by now, but these aren't bass, these are tilapia. It's hard to, to figure out which ones are tilapia and bass, but that bass had a bed right in that little corner in between those cut cattail stalks. Normally, when you look at a cattail stalk like that, you pitch in those open holes inside. But now, when they're cut off like this, and there's just the roots, it's still the same hole. That's exactly where they spawn. Bro. Braided line, bandito bug, trocar, hook, guys, this is, I mean, just, I'll say this, and I know a lot of guys caught a lot of fish, a lot of guys caught them, but there's nobody in the top 10 here other than one guy was here for a minute. Everybody I saw in this area had spinning rods in their hand, and they caught a lot of fish. They caught a bunch. Every time I, I, I hear them, I stopped looking. I told my co I said, don't tell me if anybody's catching a fish. I don't want to know anything. I literally just toned it out and just kept doing my deal and throwing these bigger baits. And that's what those bigger fish eat. That's a Guggen bait bandito bug. I designed this bait. Let's go. We got we got we got three more. We need three more like that. We can do it, dude. We get them. Well, that was about 30 minutes ago. Let's Ooh. get out to Scott Martin live. There are big things, as we promised, or have giant things are happening on Lake Okeechobee. Certainly the last hour has been uh, pretty momentous for one Scott Martin and Easton Fothergill. Martin's up to 77 pounds, 15 ounces on Bass Trek, probably a little bit more. He's probably second Got all him. time total weight in an open. Gerald Swindle had 80 pounds, 13 ounces in total. Needs about a four pounder to break that. I don't know how big it is, dude, but it's it's mad. He's got three little ones in the line. Oh yeah, well. biggin'. Oh my gosh, dude. Bigger than the other one. He just said bigger than the other one. Oh no. No, no, no. I'm hoping he means oh, no. nine. Oh, That's no. what he's talking about. When it came up then, it's giant. Oh my God, what is going on? This is it. If he needs about a four pounder to get past Gerald Swindle's 80 pounds, 13 ounces. Dude, bro. If he lands this, he just broke the It's a 10 pounder, dude. Got him, that is it, baby! That's it! Woo! Yeah. <sighs> Bro, I want to spin it around on the wacky worm! It's bigger than the other one, dude. Got rid of a one pounder. Oh my gosh, bro. <sighs> I don't even know what to say right now. I want to cry. I want to jump. I'm shaking, dude. That is a big one. That might be 10 pounds. Look at the gut on that thing, dude. Look at the gut on this thing. Oh my gosh. Am I live? Probably. I'm going to show y'all a call. 
This is a call you dream of. <laughs> that is the Bassmasters Classic, baby. <laughs> Darling, Suzanne, how about that? Oh, she's been praying on her butt off. I tell you, this lake's special, dude. This lake's special. This lake is special, bro. Let's go have some fun now. Let's try to do something bigger than we did first day. I think we can do it, dude. Congratulations. I, I think that's, I don't know. I think, I mean, I don't know, dude. So two nines is 18, a six is 24, and two two pounders is 28, 29 pounds. Somebody would have to have 37. I think I just made the best measure of class two, baby. Can I go this year, please? Can y'all just make me go this year? I'll go right now, I'll go to, I'll go to Grand Lake. Thank you, Jesus. All right, I gotta tell you a story. Two stories. One story is last day of practice. I roll in here. I got 20 minutes to fish. Now, I know I'm gonna fish in this flat, but I don't really know where I'm gonna start. I know there's gonna be 100 boats. So I'm like, I need to find a little zone. I roll in here, 20 minutes to go. We had to be in at noon. I stopped my boat right here. Put my trolling motor down. I'm like, huh, there's a bite. Huh, there's a bite, there's a bite, there's a bite. Okay, so then I go exclamation point on my unit. I start here, cut 33 pounds right here. I didn't come here yesterday. Cut 23 over there. I came here with 10 minutes to go, dude, and caught it at eight and a half. I just pulled up again, I've been here 10 minutes, just caught another nine. Like, I caught a 912, and that nine, a 94, an eight something, another eight something within 50 yards of where I'm, my boat's sitting. And that is how I won the tournament. I mean, it was not me. That was a blessing beyond comprehension. So thank you, Lord, because uh, I'm just holding the rod in my hand, dude. But if I wouldn't have landed right here, this wouldn't have happened. It's not a secret spot. It just happens to be. And the second thing is my lucky sandwich. My guy made it for me on the first day, and he's like, hey, you should. And I caught 33. He's like, you should eat your sandwich now. I said, no way, dude. I'll eat that thing on Saturday. We're going to eat this on the way in. Dude, what a fight in the power poles. It went, don't, don't, don't. I went, uh, it, I, look, I was looking at that fish. It didn't look like a 10 pounder to me. I thought it was like a five or six pounder. Is that the same one you saw? Yeah. All right, let's catch, let's just, let's go have fun, dude. Let's try to catch two more big ones and have like seriously 35 pounds or something. Thank you, P-Line. Thank you, Luz. I've been fishing Luz this year. I switched over to Luz, and I tell you what, man, my confidence level, and I know this will sound like a sales pitch, but this is not one bit a sales pitch. This stuff is awesome. All these actions are perfect. I've got choices of rods and reels, and when I put them in my hand for the first time, uh, Rocky at Luz, thank you for believing in me. Um, I felt the difference, dude. And that's their little tagline, and that is why, because these rods are amazing. The reels are amazing. So many different actions for every little technique. And I, I feel like I have so many options now. I'm playing with a full bag. And so I, I told Rocky, I said, I've got a lot of confidence right now with these, these the rods, good rods will make you fish better, 100%. Let's go. Am I allowed to call my wife? Here, That's come so here. badass, dude. What a 45 minute stretch, Tommy, for Scott Martin. Uh. Struggling all morning, he catches a six and says one bite at a time, and we come back in the last 45 minutes, he has two nine plus pounders. Now he could beat his own single day opens weight record if he keeps it on. He just, he set the single day record, he set the three day record. Yes, sir. Uh, he made the Bassmaster Classic before it's even been announced where it's going to be at. That's happened before. Uh, now we can look and say, can he catch a hundred? And he's, yeah. there, what's he need now to catch a hundred pounds? Nineties, easy, easy. Right. He only needs 40, 41 pounds and an ounce. 
Well, he's got a good start. Yeah. He's 13 uh, pounds away. I mean, he's low turn. on 86.7, and he's got and three pounds on two fish. It's on his home lake where his father made, you know, everything felt like this is where everything came to came into perspective. Well, I'm going to tell you, Ronnie's a little spoiled for that to be his home lake. <laughs> well, yeah. I, um, it ain't Lake Maumelle. It is I not. just can't no. believe it. It hadn't sunk in, to be honest with you. And, and, and that's partly because of my mentality this week. I'm not going to try to get over emotional of anything until we stand on that stage. And then I won't be able to hold it together, that's for sure. You know, if I have a chance to win here today, it'd mean so much. Making that transition a few years ago, on the FL, from the FLW tour over here. You know, haven't won a Bassmaster event yet. It mean, means a lot. My dad won a Bassmasters in that same parking lot at our marina when I was like 13 years old. And that inspired me. And so if I can pull it off today, standing in that same parking lot in front of my mom and hopefully my dad and everybody, it'd be pretty, uh, pretty monumental for me. And, and I just want to represent this lake. I wanted to. I want to win this tournament for my family, but also for this lake. I love this lake, and we got to. We got to take care of this thing. And, um, but you know what? We've got several more, a couple more hours. Just buckle down, and let's uh, let's fish hard the next two hours and see what we can do. You're saying we might be close to, if not over, the three-day tournament. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be. That would be really awesome, you know, for me, having Okeechobee represent a weight record with my name on it's awesome. I think Byron Velvet had it, Clear Lake. I think it was Clear Lake, Byron, Byron Velvet. So we're gonna have to call Byron here in a little bit. If I do, if that is the case, tell him I'm sorry. He's a good buddy of mine, but he had it long enough. The tournament he's referencing was like a, I think like a top 100 or like a different invitational, not a quote unquote open, open. where there was semi pro and you know a pro and like co an invitation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Once well, we transition to the opens, that's a that's a different genre. That's a new set of records. It, which, it right? was a boat yes. on it was boater on boater, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so he may surpass that 83 pounds and change as well, but he definitely did Man. the <laughs> opens. Randall oh. Tharp. Randall Tharp. There's a 2000 California Invitational on Clear Lake. Stay on top. 83.5. And that's a big one. That's a big one, dude. Yes. Look at how fat that one is. Oh my God, dude. It's a three pound long fish that weighs four and a half. Oh, yeah. Look at that, I barely had her, dude. Whew. Whew, yes. Dude, that fish is way over three pounds, and look at how short it is. <laughs> man, oh man. You said it, Greg. It was gonna pop off even more. This and afternoon. I mean, it blew the roof off. Two nine pounders, gets the record. Already had the record for the single day. Scott Martin showing how to do it on his home lake, heading toward a win at Okeechobee. We'll be right back. All right, nice hand, folks. One of the great names in fishing, Roland Martin. Roland Martin is the champion of the Lake Okeechobee 1991 Florida Invitational. $34,000 richer than he was this morning. Hey, no, wait a minute. I want, I want, I want to turn. Hey, I've just seen Ken Cook and I beat him. I've just seen Jack Payne. And I've just seen Jimmy Houston, and I'll beat all those guys, all those top guys. I'll beat them. I'll beat them. Roland Martin in 1991, Tommy. 1991, he wins at Okeechobee, and Scott Martin was a teenager there. And he said last night on the phone, that was the moment seeing my dad win at our home lake in the parking lot, and I was of age, that I wanted to possibly do that one day. Yeah. Roland is what, Mary Ann? Coming out to greet him there. Not his first win with the Bassmasters at Okeechobee, but a very important one. Well, I've worked real extensively in this tournament with Fred Ward. Fred's been on the lake for about 50 days, 
and we found about three good patterns and one of the patterns i guess that some of this old footage is so incredible we talked about it 24th bass visit to lake okeechobee 1980 was the first time we were here and that was what roland martin won but scott was just five years old and in the background right there before marianne ran to hug roland scott martin was just a young lad i think he was probably in 1991 i think he was 15 16 years old and scott martin got to see his dad beat the likes of ken cook jack haynes so many other big names george cochran in that event and roland obviously said it in jest because he had so many titles in 1991 up to that point but to win at your home lake uh, in that parking lot the same parking lot they're weighing in right now all these years later for scott his first bass event possibly to win that's some nostalgia mm. So much history on that lake with that family. I mean, the blast off is going out of Roland Martin's Marina. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they pretty much own everything on that lake. So Greg, all of those that somewhat brighter stuff, all the dark spots are holes in the grass. Holes in the grass. It's, it's grass, and then the real bright spots are the fish. Are Whether, the fish. Yeah. And you watch, those, there was a pair there and how the male was circling. This is what you want. Winning in a bass event is the feat in itself, but we talked about it when Will Davis won at Lay Lake. To be able to win on your home lake against the other people in the top 10, like Polinick and Christy and some of the other Coosa River guys, for Scott to win at Okeechobee, his first event for with BASS, and have guys like Brandon McMillan, Randall Tharp, even the younger youngins of the world, like Easton and Tucker and, and Bo Browning and Paul Marks, all these guys, that's a great field of anglers to beat on your home lake and to do it in this fashion is is cool. Right now, Barney, he's got to make it back. Got to make it back. We've been waiting for him to show up on BASS. He won $3 million on the other circuit, a bunch of Tile 8 tournaments. He's been here 50-something events and, and uh, kind of skirted in the classic and missed last year. And now he's going to be in in one shot. He's been over with them wolves, suit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. That would have. <laughs> yes, they're not just together in the pictures, they're yeah. <laughs> together physically out there, Cramper and George. Oh, my God. Austin Cramper's got one on. Two who survived down in South Bay. Sorry. Stay down. Big one after big one after here, big girl. one this afternoon. We're Over here. Early in the Over season, here. you get spoiled in it. Come here. Come here, big girl. get a fish that breaks the top five individual. We'd have to be over 11-5. Come here, big girl. Top five of open. Come here. Come here. Oh, God, her. Yeah! She bit four times and we got her on the fourth time. Yes! Golly! 
So, oh my gosh, look at that freaking sucker. That's the one that blew up on my prop bait and then jumped off, the same exact one. That one's for Brooks, right there. That's your fish, Brooks. That's a five or six, I don't know, we're about to find out. Oh my gosh. I almost screwed up again. I had the drag so freaking tight. And I was trying to get it loose and I couldn't get it loose. Lord knows what all I broke in here, but I don't care. She's a five pounder. It's a five pounder F5 rod company. This rod right here, seven two, just saved my butt. Is it number five? Number five. That's a good call. Mm -hmm. Oh no. We'll be headed to Oklahoma, Austin Cranford's home state, later in the season. St. Croix Bassmaster opens. Oklahoma's Lake Eufaula. Austin getting off to a great start on his campaign this year. It's we got to see him at we got to see him at Sam Rayburn. Sorry to interrupt, Greg. We got to see him at Sam Rayburn in that fall event. He was one who had had done. It's crazy well how well. many big fish are in this little spot or big area, I should say. Y'all, I was going to say mm. he's doing well, but not quite as well as that guy. No. Whoever gets second today will get the maximum amount of possible EQ points. That's right, technically. Because yes. Scott is taking up the top he points. Double qualified for, yeah, for he's, elites. He's yeah. only in this one division just for the classic. And what's you've done this. You've you know won an event and clinched your classic berth and just fished I your do, elite season. You know, I, I think what's What's this going to do for him this year? Stress free? Go for more wins? You, you know, it's funny how it affects each person differently. You've seen guys do this before and then kind of not be so good for them. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I was yeah. like, because here's the deal that. Flyers on the windshields. And I was like, you're oh, this motivated. He's like, to make yeah, we're having it at the marina, Royal Martin Marina. I go, can I, can I sign up for it? He's like, sure. I was like, 15. And we ended up, we didn't win, but we came in third. And that was, that was fun. I just think about all the, you know, here's the thing about Okeechobee, and this is what people have been here a bunch will remember, is that every year it's different. Like, it's different places. Like, waypoints don't mean anything. Like, grass changes and all that. So it's, it's fun for that because it's always a new lake. It's never just the same old thing. You know, you go to a lot of places in the country certain times of the year, and you're always fishing the same places hard spots or drop-offs or rock piles or whatever it may be. But here, it's always changing. But yeah, maybe he lays back the rest of the year and enjoys the classic berth, or maybe he comes out gun swinging and it fires him up for the rest mm -hmm. of the year. Everybody's different. And we've seen this with other people. It affects everybody differently. Some guys run with it. I could it. say one thing to my dad right now. Mm. I would tell him thank Some you don't. for fishing as hard as he has over the years. That's the one thing, you know, you learn a lot from your parents, different things. And what I learned from my dad is he never, ever, ever quit fishing. He never, he never, I mean, he fishes the 84. He's still fishing as hard as now as he ever, ever did. And, you know, he, he was relentless on the water. 
He, long days. There was never a half day of fishing with him. Many, many times people that booked their flights to leave the same day if they were fishing with him, they missed their flights because <laughs> he fished till dark. I've dreamed about my Where Sam George started the day fifth place. Oh! Woo, that one's stunning. That was that one I seen over there moving. Golly, man, she had it too. If you've been under a rock or don't know Sam Jordan, like this is one of those John Garrett moments, like just been so close and it's the last event of the year, something Some happens. So yet, even for him better. to get off to a good start this year is <laughs> massive. You seem to be in quite a bind. It's a battle cry, I guess. When you get you get past noon on your hook set and you're trying to catch up to a fish and, and still winch it, it'll make you say some things. That's a big one. Honestly, it doesn't seem like it matters how you fish. There are big ones firing off everywhere. Getting pretty frisky out there. I mean, how many bags over 20 pounds is there gonna be today? There was 13 and there was 17, so we could have all 10, we could have nine. So sick. Let's go. been fishing for all day. Something like that. Whew. Five seventy six. Blue. Should move him up a spot. Yeah, he should net out three and a quarter pounds from that. Three and three quarters pounds, excuse me. You gonna win one at Okeechobee one day? I don't want to like You've been so close. You've gotten second, fifth, ninth, just in your most recent couple events. I mean, it's What's just big, cool? big cool after big cool. Of... <laughs> I love those photos. <laughs> See you, buddy. I mean, this is probably one of the best fish catching days that we've, I mean, Finally it's right up there. Bite. Right? Yeah. I've had and like this 20 is that size. Scott. Like three nine pounders. Yeah, and yeah. and Scott himself catching 
the weight and the size fish in the most pressured. This isn't like, oh, this is the first day of the tournament. This is after all practice, 60, 70 boats in an area for three days. Still potential to catch another 30 pound plus bag. Yeah. He's going to break the Century Club in three days, I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, he's gonna, he was up by 20 pounds, Tommy, over 10th starting the day. He might, right now, is beating, is beating second by 20 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> he's That's, beating second by 20 yeah, pounds. Yeah, he's got a... Golly. I mean, we're 38 pound lead over 10th place now. <laughs> What's the largest margin of victory in an open? Ooh, that's a good question. Go, we, maybe good he question. sets another record. Oh, we got, you have two hours, Such. We gotta figure this out. Uh, okay, we'll try. As he doesn't, he doesn't even lean up and start typing. No, I'm not. He's not even, no urgency. That's his style, I guess dude. I gotta do it, I gotta do it here. I like your style, dude. This is the time somebody idles by Tucker and says, Scott's got 33 pounds, and it would be like. <laughs> and you just see him just <laughs> collapse. We've seen Christy do that. Yeah. I mean, Christy will just oh. try to get both hands around his neck. <laughs> You fish your first open, you finish second, you're probably pretty happy. Well, I gotta say, for big fish on a final, yeah, this, this is the number one. Big fish on a final day? Yeah, on a final day. Absolutely. I mean, there, there was a 45 minute stretch with three nine pounders. <laughs> That's, after a while, it doesn't seem real. It's incredible, but it is real. Scott Martin. Yeah, you can't take this for granted, what's happening today. This is. Oh, this is a special, special event here for sure. This is a, we interrupt all programming to show you this stuff here. It's, it's that, it's that uh, level. one fish at a time, baby. This first oh. nine pounder. This yeah. is, first one was a six first plus. Nine. It's a 10 pounder, dude. Got him. That is it, baby! Think about it is, the record's not done yet. He could catch another nine just as easily as not. Maybe two. Maybe get to 90 or beyond. Stay we'll tuned. Yeah. The St. Croix Bassmaster opens at Lake Okeechobee, presented by Seven. Sponsored by Mencoder. By Nitro Boats. And by Skeeter Boats. Nice day to be on Lake Okeechobee. Or on a levee near Lake Okeechobee. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or watching stuff on TV from Lake Okeechobee. It looks like the deep south. Yeah, I think I think he's all the way deep on that. <laughs> oh, what a place. It's, it's a unique spot in all of the areas that the Bassmasters ever visit. There's no place like Lake Okeechobee. Both in its physical dimensions and its, its layout. The type of fish that live here is the main thing. And we've seen the Giants today. And I suspect we're going to see some more. What's stopping them? Got all day, you know you broke the record, you know you most likely won the tournament, and he just said, my dad always fished to the last second and fished hard, so that's what I've got to do as well today. So Yeah, you can't go in now. Yeah. <laughs> I told him, he said I was going to be serious all day long, but I said, when you break the record and you feel like you got the classic birth, you can be a little, a little more Scott Martin TV show Scott Martin if he wants to be. And he said, I'll, I'll bring it out in the afternoon if I if I catch him. Magical day for Scott Martin for sure. It's been a charmed six months for this man right here, Easton Fothergill. He's qualified for the classic too. Also, a chief team of the year, Strike King College Bassmaster. Now, Easton's qualified for the Grand Lake Classic, correct? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Well, we've been busting some uh, three-day opens weights in the last couple of years. Swindle, of course, has a record 
2011. Corey Johnson had 78 pounds, 2001, 1,000 islands. Ben Milliken last year was 77.14 at Toledo Bend. Got in the top 10. Chris Lane, Harris, Harris changed 72. 11, Jody White on the St. Lawrence last year, 71.15. And this, he's, Scott Martin's at 86.7 right now. We think he's two pounds low, maybe. I just saw another big one here on this little reed clump. He's sitting on top of the clump, which I haven't seen too much this week. The big ones, at least the little ones, do it all the time. But and usually those ones are easy to get to bite, but this one is not being easy. Yeah, he was real calm all throughout the classic bracket. Real nid fish, but boy, this nine pounder, he got pretty excited. So it oh, sounds from the go. sounds of it, he caught an eight plus pounder yesterday to be able to get into the top 10, yeah. last man in. That was his biggest fish. And he said, I beat yesterday's personal best, which means he is the last two days of his life. He's, he's caught the biggest fish he's ever caught. From Grand Rapids, Michigan, pretty far up there near Leech Lake. Yeah. Minnesota, sorry. Holy crap. Come here. Oh my god. Come here. Oh, oh. oh my gosh. <sighs> One of the many nine pounders we've seen caught today. <laughs> Power shot with fat baby finesse. Holy crap three in a 45 minute window in the same region oh of the lake. Oh my gosh. I think that's bigger than the one I caught yesterday. Oh my. As you said, Such, northern part of Minnesota actually claimed to have gone down and practiced in the southern part of Minnesota in advance of his bracket competition so he could see some water that looked more like what he was going to find in Kansas, in Milford, Kansas. And I don't know whether that helped or not, but uh, he got the right result. So he's sitting in sixth place with a nine pounder. <laughs> <laughs> Just to kind of go tell you how the fishing's going. It's rough crowd. Oh, he had 13 pounds, 10 ounces on day one to come in with like one of the big bags, 24, 12 on day two. And that big fish late got him in our top 10. Matt Adams had 13 yesterday after 27, four. So it was big day one day. Greg, I wanted to ask you about momentum. Somebody comes in here, gets a top 25, and, and does that set them on their way or just get their head right for the rest of the season? You know, anyone who drew a check in this event feels like they got out of there. You know, and it could be guys that, you know, a lot of people don't like Florida. There's a handful of people that don't. I love Florida. Very iffy. But it is, it, like, the majority of the guys you'll poll, they're like, eh. Florida scares a lot of people. Fighter but, is one who uh, has told me he's, you know, first or he could finish last. Yeah, that's that's Florida. So anybody that got out of there with a check is probably feeling pretty good. I mean, you know, you'll always have guys that are disappointed. Oh, I lost one, it would have helped me, whatever. But realistically, if you were in that top 45 and you leave this event going to the next one, you have a legit shot at making the elites. A legit, now, like you're already ahead of the curve. 
Conversely, you start 100th. We had one guy, Kyle Patrick, started like 87th last year at Ufala, and he climbed up. I, I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying as this group evolves and is getting stronger every year, that's making it less likely for someone to come back from that. Just because chances are there's going to be nine guys, and one of them finished 45th, and all his finishes will be equal or, equal or better than the guy that was 87th in this tournament or 110th. Yeah. Or, you only have to have, have those guys who had all the top tens. Had, uh, yeah, but you only have to have 3% times. of this field get on a roll. 3% of these guys can put seven to nine tournaments together, and the other two, like John Garrett's lowest finish last year was the one he played it safe on at the St. Lawrence. He didn't make a long run. He stayed safe. He didn't want to zero. Right. Didn't want to bump. You know, didn't want to bomb, and he was like 60th. So like, you're gonna have guys. Three percent of this field has the ability and skill to get top 50s in every single event. Every so that's single what Hackney's saying is you can come back from it. But if there's nine guys that don't let you come back from it, you can come back all you want and be the first man out. And there's more guys now who. Keep yeah, you down. we've got we've got three times the amount of former pros, whether they fished the elites or they've never fished the elites and they fished professionally elsewhere. We have we have on this list, you know, 15 to 20 former elites, and we've got another eight to 10 that have fished elsewhere their They're, whole life that are top level people. They know how to do it. So you're getting the percentages of your EQ field. They've done this for a living before. So it's one of the reasons that this year you have a smaller number of the EQ field from last year. Yeah, about, about by about 15. Because that 15 like every day couldn't it handle slow it. Like this. So what you've done now Maybe. is you've you just keep making the group furious. stronger and stronger. It took a lot. There's a higher percentage okay, of guys. Yeah, that yeah. Can like today was tough because it was like I'm watching the one dude just catch one every five seconds on a spin rod. They weren't big, but two pounders are way more than I had. And I just stayed with it. And uh, my mentality all week's just been to take it one fish at a time. I fished so many tournaments here over the years where it's, it's the you know it's it, you just keep fishing and you stay patient and then you you build a bag by the end of the day. Many tournaments that I've won on this lake um, at noon I have nothing, nothing, and then come on with 25 pounds. Different ways that we catch them. It's just the way this lake is. So. It probably hurts people the most as they get spun out a little bit when they're not catching them that good. They start fishing too fast. They start trying to make things happen. And it's actually the opposite of what you want to do. You want to slow down. If you're not catching them, slow down more. Don't speed up. Don't run around like I got to run here, run there. No, just slow down. Caught 33 pounds the first day from right here. To, to that second patch. This is as far as I went. Big one. Oh, good one. Every pound counts. Just sitting there. Just sitting there, I went. Still got two small ones relatively. Three pounder. Oh, that was right on. This will be a, a two pound coal like right 90. there. Yep. It's gonna be right there near 30 pounds today. Giant one, bro. I mean a freaking 10 pounder. Tommy caught 33.5 on day one or 33.2, I think, one of the one of those two numbers. Backs it up a 25 and, and second biggest bag of the tournament basically to himself. Just one fish and at a time, baby. Right at that 30-pound mark again. Just one fish at a time. With, with a 112 still Just left to call. We talked earlier about, you know, what he'd done in the, over the first two days. We hadn't oh, yeah. seen since the classic last year. The same thing Gussie did. He beat the, beat everyone, each day. Beat the whole field each day. Now he's gone beyond that. It looks like and he's going to beat the whole field with the biggest weight three days in a row. That's. I wish we had numbers on how many times that's done. Yeah. I mean, yeah. now he's beating people yes. from the past. Yes. <laughs> like he, all these people that yeah. thought they had good days in the past, oh. now he's beating those people. Yes. He's, yeah. Right now, his two-day total Ooh. would still have him sitting in fourth place in the tournament. Wow. That is so impressive. <sighs> Call me crazy, but we just caught a monster, dude. Well, that's not nearly the monster that we're about to see. Yeah. I love, I love, I love last, this. Those last two. Yeah, he said that was a nine Ooh. even. 
There's a low That's nine. what we needed. He called the other one a 10 at first. Begging. Oh my gosh, dude. Scott said it well. It seems like the more you pick up your troll motor in Florida, pounder, the lower you finish. And so it's, you just put it down once. Sam George said he's picked up his troll motor it. once, and that was Woo! to head back every day. Woo! I'd have That's to say it. that I don't know of any tournaments Woo! in Florida that I've ever ran around. Like, it is kind of that way. Got rid of a one pounder. Oh my gosh, bro. That is the Bassmasters Classic, baby. <laughs> that might be a that's ten. a ten pounder. That might be a ten. Yeah. Right. Suzanne, how about that? Oh, yeah, it looks like a oh, ten. Oh, she's been praying like her. Love those culls when you put the cullfish inside the one. Oh my gosh! Alive well. That one could have did a U-turn, Tommy. That one could have <laughs> yeah. swam around. You, in you his could have mouth. put two of them in there. Oh my goodness! I, th I do think that's a ten pounder. Been a while since we checked in with Bo Browning. Bo Browning having a great tournament. Somebody have been upset using forward facing. Just a big one. Stay on there, sugar. Stay on there. Stay on there. Hey, 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 hey. Stay on there. Come on, come on, come on. Come back this way. How about that? Come here, 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 come here. Hey, hey, hey. Duh. Come on, come on. It took me all day, come day. <laughs> Finally. You know, out of the group fishing today, I, Bo by far has the best hair. Oh, no doubt. I know he's, it's no Scott just... Martin giant, but dead gum, man, I worked my butt off for. <laughs> Last time you were here with us, you were talking about barefoot or flip flops, and now it's hair. Yeah, a lot. I think these, you just admire. Times just, are changing. Yeah. I mean, it's you know what? These, they're it's a new generation. They're doing different That's things. Right. They got to flow. If you want to go. Scott Martin, look at that right there. Wow. 21, 21 pound advantage over the rest of the field. 21 and a half pound advantage over the rest of the field. Yeah, Such, we need to figure out what the uh, what the all time beatdown numbers are for well, three day by 10 pounds, open events. So I can't find anything more uh, than that right now. If he just goes ahead and breaks the all time BASS win, yeah, he'll do it all. He'll have it. Absolutely. We'll be he, right back. He's going to have it. St. Croix Bassmaster open at Lake Okeechobee, presented by Seven Reels. Live coverage sponsored by Daiwa. As we take a look at the sights, what there is to see, and that's plenty here at Lake Okeechobee. What was that, Tom? That looked like an iguana to me, Greg. Well, yeah. Tastes like chicken, they say. <laughs> That's, they do say that, Ronnie. Don't laugh. There's what kind dream. of chicken are you eating? Well, Tommy? I don't know. It's pretty cheap, though. It's, I get a good deal on it. Over at Save More. Oh. Get down to Tucker Smith. <laughs> I can feel the texture right now. I can just feel well, it. It's, you know, you just it gets cold down it. there. They, they immobilize and fall out of trees. That's yeah. right. And That's people right. do have That's, recipes for them. It's, yeah, it's the Jamaican chicken with a bone jerk, in it. Yeah. Jerk iguana. <laughs> Medium rare. I mean, this is an important one. This could cut the lead to 19 instead of 21. Tighten the record up a little more. <laughs> All comebacks begin with a single fish run. Hey, that's very true. I'm just making jest. <laughs> that one just didn't make it in. 
Oh. Well, that couldn't have been a five. Hmm. Tucker and Tharp are tied. Yeah, very, very neck and neck. That's the crazy thing is we're going to see a huge margin of victory over guys who average 22 pounds a day at Okeechobee. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. they did not catch him. How big is Tharp's bag? It says Tharp has a 20 right even. now on Bass Track. With a six, a five, and two three and a halfs, and then a two pounder. But I'm pretty sure he's he's probably got 22 at least because he's probably got a seven and a six, and a four, and a four. And we saw him catch another four. Yeah. So he's got two fours. He's probably at 20, 23, 24. Then yeah. If if each of his four biggest fish add a half a pound or a pound to him for sure. But if he wants to finish that, he probably needs another big big bite to. Mullins acted like, I don't know if he's broke or not, but he would stay with Aaron in his truck. Aaron would rent a campsite, usually next to me and Sarah. And uh, Mullins kept hanging around. It took Mullins like two years for it to even come over and have dinner with us because he didn't want, you know what I'm saying? Just, he's a fucking great guy too. I talk, I talk with all of those guys, dude. I, you know. Even though I hadn't fished against a lot of those guys in five years, I've talked with all of them. You see them at shows. Regular. Come over, come up here and look at the screen. I told Tucker. I said, if you get the chance to teach or show us what you're looking at in the in the canal. Dude, I'm going to just They're keep fishing there. north. I mean, we ain't even gone halfway down the stretch. It's got fish, so. Look yes. at them. I'm yeah, going to keep bogging this thing around. Hope we connect with that eight pounder. Give us five more pounds, which is going to put I'm us up there. there. You, know. you look at Scott's smallest bag was 25. A couple of them boys ahead of me he's caught like 27, I think. So we need, we need to get in that range to even have a Back on up to Bo Browning. Got a, a better one in the boat a few minutes ago. Kind of perked him up a little bit. This area is a lot smaller than what Easton and Scott have been in, and it can't handle nearly as much pressure. And we can see that today a little bit with McMillan and Bo both ninth and 10th. Like it's, it's been the most there. suffering we'll spot. I was, I, when I hit him, when I found him on here, my wacky was going down and he was. Night, <laughs> what the go? <laughs> Come here, good night. Another solid one, anyways. Freaking afternoon bite. <laughs> Dead come afternoon bite. Two, two. Thank you. Even if you don't win, it's always especially your first top ten in an open. Oh, that didn't work. I understand the bows. Parents were going to be at the, are going to be at the way in today. And I feel certain they'll be at the way in at the next stop. Two two. And no doubt he has a really, really good support group behind him. 
Yeah. Oh, no doubt. They've supported me. I've, I've knocked a prop off my boat at Hamilton and called the Brownings, and they drove one out to me. So they've supported quite good a few. Good people to know, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, people you to know, know. That's, that's what you want in your Rolodex right there. <laughs> you either got a rope or do you got a prop? One of the two. It's like the calm before the storm. <laughs> There's one in here. He's just hiding. I can't quite figure out where he wants to be. Now, heck, what's the mission for a guy like Bo Brown? He came in the day like 18 pounds back in the lead. I mean, sure, you want to catch a 38-pound bag and try to... Oh, no, but his deal was just to have as good a day as he could, leave here with the best points, I've as most money that he can make. You, you know... I've caught four over nine. Three over nine, right here, and two eights in this zone. And that's the thing about the lake. The fish will spawn in, all right, so here's a tip for everybody. So like normally, like when you're sight fishing or spawn fishing, most lakes are going down shorelines and it's, you know, a bed here and there and whatever. Here on this lake, it's like clusters. They'll spawn in clusters, like the size of a football field or half the size of a football field, and then they won't be any beds for a while until you find another cluster. They're not just randomly. If there's one, there's a bunch. And um, then this is obviously a, a cluster of, you can't see them, you know, but just casting around, fishing slow through here, and they're coming to me. But to your point, you know, everybody who made the top ten is a winner, okay? In any of the elite you event, open, good, yeah, you, you feel good about a top ten. And it gets you in the right mindset. Gunner's in a tournament right now at Gunnersville. She just got her new, new boat, she's got a new skeeter, and she's in her very first tournament at Gunnersville. And she picked her boat up last night, so no practice. She literally rolled into this tournament today just going to wing it. So hopefully she has a good day. Also now with Scott Martin resetting the heaviest opens weight record, it has bumped it to where the top five is exclusively 72 pounds, 11 ounces and up for three days wow. for the top five record. It'll be Scott Martin here, Swindle at Toho in 11, Corey Johnston, St. Lawrence, Thousand Islands in 2021, Ben Milliken, Toledo Ben last year, and then it'll be Chris Lane, Harris Chain, 2012. So. All over 72. Three of the top five winningest open weights come from Florida. Yeah. One smallmouth and then one Texas. You'll feel Louisiana. when you pull it through there, you'll feel like real thick stuff and that's, you're in the cattail. And then you'll feel it break free into a nice little clean hole for a little bit. You just want to keep pitching back in those same zones. Like I'm in a cattail right there. Not the live one, but a dead one. I'm going to pull it up over. And it feels pretty clean right there. So that's kind of where a bed would be. We saw him doing this at a popka, Tommy. Shallow cover, fishing right. reed heads. Mm -hmm. We had seen forward-facing sonar offshore, but we really hadn't seen it flipping and seeing that. And we started to see that at Popka in that uh, Elite Series at Harris Chain. Uh, I think it was 2022 when Buddy Gross won. Yeah, he uh, two tournaments that year that he he got close. I mean, it was it was there at the Harris Chain, also Pickwick that year. Yeah, yeah. He was on there. I remember him missing several. Yeah, he, he was had not a, happy with. It. Oh, it was a very frustrating day. On he had a very yeah. trying day and had to later apologize because he worked his way back onto camera coverage and said, "Sorry, the way I acted on camera the other day was not the way I should have been acting." <laughs> but he did have, I mean, every every big one he lost. 
Yeah, it just kind of got ridiculous after a while. It was just it was the worst luck. You one could of those have. ones. Yeah, it was more yeah. so like maybe he lands it, but we thought he was going to lose it because it just that's the way every bite had been. Mm -hmm. Oh, with his dad, I think he's put more stress on himself to make the classic. You know, this this season may be his easiest over here on BASS. Hiller and I fished a tournament. It was all over the internet last year. And it was in May. And we fished in the same general area. And we had five for 29.97 or something, basically 30 pounds. It was like 100 boats in the tournament. We didn't win. We finished 31st. Yeah. 31st. Yeah. Well, we're starting this year with the St. Croix Bassmaster Opens, where we started the Bassmaster Elite Series last year. And Tyler Rivette was the man there who. Uh, before the tournament began, yeah. it's kind of when he set up his victory here. He went out to fish and catch himself some crappie so they could have something to eat back at the house that night. Big him. We were actually very worried. Day three, you know, the oh. first two days, it took over 55 pounds to be wow. leading. It was on pace for century mark. That day three That's was cold so cold. tough for so That's many, cold especially cold. Tyler Rivette, that we were curious how, if this would hold up for day four. His first bite, wow. this one on day four, we were like, Tyler now is in position to win this event. And he was able to walk through that door. Tyler got into this one. Was last the 13th second, place? He was the last one in. Yeah, the last guy. Someone in. dropped out and they called him and he said, I'll put a troll yeah, motor on my new boat and we'll go down there. And nearly made the top 10. Yeah, 13th place. You know, Martin has topped his weight, 86.15 from last year's 40. Event. <laughs> That's, there you go, another, another milestone there. I think oh, I think we were at Murray, or we were. That's some good bites. Seminole, maybe somewhere. And that weekend, it was like 22 30-pound bags at Okeechobee or something for a local tournament. Like all my buddies were in it, and they got like second, fifth, seventh, and they all had 30-something pounds. But 37 wins for like a single-day event. We, we were, were at an uh, elite event. Yeah, we were at Murray. Murray. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Because it was a month or so later or two months later than when we were there. Yeah. And they were all frogging. It was when that yeah. They said the bluegill were spawning and it was and he just brought that up that uh him and Hillary were in the uh Scott and Hillary were in the tournament and had what did he say? A a giant bag, maybe even twenty nine pounds and they were like thirtieth or yeah. something. Was, was that so the same many, one he's referencing? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the tournament he's referencing. Mm -hmm. And I bring that up only to say, like, there's things, there's lakes that out there, you know, that are out there that you can catch 20 to 25 consistently. Like, it's you're going to catch four pounders all the time. It's hard for some lakes to produce a 30 pound bag, or the the capabilities of I can catch 40 pounds today, maybe if you know. And like, this is one of those 10 lakes in the country that you can have a day you can't have hardly anywhere else. I mean, you know, there was some incredible footage last year from the elite, but. This today, I don't, I don't necessarily know that I saw a 45-minute stretch when there were three nine-pounders. No, no I don't think you did. <laughs> I mean, there's only a handful of places, tournament lakes, that can produce this kind of weight. That, and this is a place that gets fished all the time. This is not a lake that right. doesn't yeah, get a lot of fishing pressure. And the cool thing, these guys, if you look at the map, are all the way around it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like one part of the lake is producing them, it's all parts of the lake. Not everybody has to go punch reeds and mats in well, Florida. If this is your style and you want to do it, go do it. Yeah. But, but you might get beat by a Tharp or a, a Scott Martin doing in those traditional areas. Or you might not. <laughs> yeah, or you might win it, like Rivette.
Tucker finally got that one to bite. He's looking to okay. call a two pounder. Don't go around that. Don't go around that. You know, it really looks like Tucker's basically been around that right where he's at all day. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Good one. I finally got one. Well, there was that pretty, pretty significant 10 or 12 fish school that we could see when, when, he, when his cameraman walked Some up there. Some type of pumping know? station is what it looks like where they pump water out of the lake or into the lake. The exact one hit it and then the next one got it. Four pounder. Great tournament for Tucker. Probably, would, would you say, Ronnie, at, at the age of 22, 23, is probably as far as national championships goes, the most decorated angler 100%. ever. I told Steve Bowman last year that if Tucker Smith were to jump in all nine opens and qualify for the Elite Series in one of his first two years, you know, and he was still in his early 20s to qualify, he would be the most highly anticipated, highly decorated angler, more decorated than Drew Cook, Patrick Walters, yeah. all those guys who have won a whole bunch. This is this guy, three high school championships. He won two with Grayson Morris before Grayson went to the University of Montevallo. Then he won one in his senior year with Hayden Marbit. Hayden eventually graduated as well and went to Auburn, and they teamed up together at the end of Tucker's Auburn time to win the national championship as well. And in between there, Tucker Smith, Logan Parks, team of the year, winning individual events, and Logan is now on the Elite Series, probably waiting for his buddy to join him next year. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's your unofficial leaderboard, a 23-pound and 5-ounce unofficially uh, distance between Scott Martin and the rest of the field. Tucker Smith, Randall Tharp, all having great tournaments. Ditto for Paul Marks, Adams, Father Gill, Cranford, Sam George, Bo Browning, and Brandon McMillan. All done well down here in Florida. St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Okeechobee, presented by Seven. In Clewiston, Florida, and yes, sir. Live coverage sponsored by Daiwa. Don't want to forget about that, very important. So great to be able to bring live fishing to you this time around. So great to have Greg Hackney with us today. Yeah. That's been a pleasure, I must that's say. Been, that's fun for me. Fantastic, I mean, that's, can't do that well. Biggin. Randall Tharp committed to the EQ, to the elite qualifying campaign, and, start the day with and got off to a great lady. start. You're thinking he made the right call, Tom. I think he did. <laughs> we said yesterday there's a difference in fishing, being unhappy and fishing mad. He can be very happy where he's at and fishing mad. He's motivated and angry. When you look at the top 10, Tommy, and we saw Randall Tharp, Scott Martin, and Brandon McMillan to start the day, it feels like it's a throwback in Okeechobee yes. history. No this kidding. Is three champs that have seen this lake more than anybody else. He was only mad at Scott Martin this morning. He was happy <laughs> about everything else. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's going to get madder. Yeah, that's a, that's a given. Stay hooked up, baby. Yes! Yes! Boom! <laughs> That's a solid start, man. I'd like to like to cull that sucker by the end of the day. For a minute there, Greg thought that, you know, Randall was gonna win the event. Ah. Scott wasn't catching him. You know? <laughs> no, we all thought the door was open and he Scott still still had to walk through it and close that door. And Tharp even has kept it on later after the two nine pounders for Scott. He lands this one. Yes. Which is a four pounder, which I know today is. doesn't seem like much, oh but God, that's that a really a three pound long fish. Four pounders are hard to come by, Florida. <sighs> yes. Dude, that fish is way over three pounds, and look at how short it is. <laughs> He's happy. You think when our average fish has been two and three quarter pounds, you think all the little ones that bring down the monster. Tharp has made a move. Down to a different area just south of Scott and Easton, or I guess that's it's an the area Monkey he Box had a lot of success in in the, in the past. While. We did have a little action Shoals. while we didn't have service. We uh, 
caught three, I believe. Caught one big one, cold. We got a three and a half is our cold fish now. So we got four big ones in there. And, you know, if I can catch a, another 10, <laughs> cold of three, it's gonna give us a great big sack of fish today. So we're, we've had a really good day, man. It's, it's been strong, it's been steady. Uh, I've kinda, I did not fish this area in the tournament. I fished here late yesterday, caught six fish here in 20 minutes yesterday. And I kinda left the area. I didn't even fish the area where I caught the 10 today. I just felt like this is the area it could go down. And I'm content here. Uh, there's a couple locals, but other than that, I got it to myself and we're gonna stick here till 240 when I have to run back. You know, having so much knowledge there, he like he's just said that he just has a feeling that one of those it's another one of those areas that's fixing to pop. You know that hadn't popped yet. He said the water in some of these areas with that we won't we haven't seen any top ten guys that some of the water looks looks great. It's just not quite set up to, like you said, go off. And so with it being such another warmer, sunny, or calm day, the last two or three hours of the day could just. Yeah, he said he caught six that. there yesterday in 20 minutes. Yeah. Because he said he skipped the area that he caught a 10 pounder out of. And he saw, uh -oh. and he saw, uh, I think this might be the same area he's talking about where he saw Sermon and Ish and they both had great bags yesterday, but he only, he only came in there for a few minutes, like he said, just 20, 30 minutes. Want to take a moment, Tommy, while we're in between fish catches. We were one short of a full field this week because on Tuesday, right before the final day of practice, Miles Berghoff, who signed up for yes. all nine, left the tournament early to go back to Tennessee to be with his family. Uh, I got to talk to him on day one of this event. I called and chatted with him. His 10 month old, 10 -month -old so daughter. So far, I ain't really like it. Diagnosed with much. I did catch neuroblastoma. On the edge of this grass and so yesterday. they have a long road ahead of them with this tests and things for their baby girl and going through, you know, cancer procedures and, and screenings. And so if you have the opportunity to go to any of Miles Berghoff's social media pages, there has been a GoFundMe from his family that is created for, for them. Like I think his yeah. sister created it for them uh, to help you know, help that financial situation. They know St. Jude has reached out to them and the opportunity, but um, trying times for a, a young yeah, father that's... that also is about to try to ende endeavor into this season. So the Bass family um, misses Miles this week and is, is thinking Definitely and praying thinking for your of family. Him and his family, absolutely. And there'll be more info. I think Such will probably have something written up in a daily limit. It might be, you know, a, a, an afterthought of this event to ride next week before the next open as well. So look for that here on yes. the website for sure. Good angler, good, really good fishing rider. Yeah. Yeah. Entertaining show host as well. Him and Joey and Nia mm -hmm. ran together. Fishing's a ever growing sport, lots of participants, but a close knit family and to have something like that, it's, it comes to your doorstep on, on that. Same thing with last week in the college event at Murray during practice that uh, there's an accident and the young man was injured and ended up passing away this week. So we're also thinking about uh, Jonathan and the college fishing community as we just keep, keep things that matter on the forefront like family and safety. That's Never try to outrun fog, never try to outrun weather. Yeah, we don't know exactly what happened. For but sure. To, but to we, sure. Right, he mentioned that. Very sorrowful that in for, the, the, for, for the family there. 
The uh, GoFundMe is up to eighty thousand dollars. Yeah, but it's going to be way more to For treat sure. that little girl. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of anglers are chipping in. Jacob Bigelow, Jacob Fouts, I see have donated money to that the Burgoffs. The male's really on it hard. Sometimes you got to catch the male before the female will bite. It seems to be the the going deal lately. That same male swim back? No, I think it was a different fish. Because when I had that fish in my hand, I looked quickly and there were still two. It's, it's funny how the shallow bite bed and fish is fired off and so has the deep bite. Yeah. This Tucker Smith's about two pounds ahead of Randall Tharp, but Tharp just ran us down his fish and yeah, his we think bass track has an lighter. update. He could be right there for second place. And that's, that could be an eight grand difference in payout. And maximum points. He would be whoever finishes second today will be the opens EQ points leader. Yep. Catbird seat. And the cat. Well, yeah. That's right. Ah. See? I mean, he stays composed when he catches one. He stays composed yep. when he loses one. He just pretty much even kill. He had a bit of a spit then, much like Ike and Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> Little he's bit. working on all yeah, parts like, of yeah, his yeah, game he's here. Not, he's, you know, he's, practice makes perfect. Yeah. Normally a technique you don't really lose them on. A single hook. Yeah. But once in a blue moon. I don't know if you noticed earlier when Scott reached over the side, the first big one he caught, it shook the hook out yeah. before he got it over the side yeah. of the boat. Tucker caught a four or five and when he grabbed it, as soon as his hand touched his lip and the fish shook, it was it popped out as well. So there's been a couple close calls. He must have them fired up, it's every cast. It looked like a lot of fish there. Just felt the line move across his mouth. better one. I was kind of surprised a while ago that last one he caught didn't help. It yeah, looked that's bigger than two pounds. Look. So he's got two two and a half pounders in there and his best are two four pounders. Well he called that one a three pounder. I mean literally he's pretty much been sitting there by that stand pipe or whatever <laughs> that is all day long. Like he's throwing at a piece of structure. He's not. 280. They're not just, it's not random. Okay. There's, when he showed the video a while ago, there was some type of square oh. outside of where the fish were. It's probably a place where they irrigate, you know, where they're, they put either put water in the lake or taking it out. They're lifting it there. They have yeah. a. She's looking at it hard, man. Reference of Tucker Smith and Paul Marks, the guys that are in that 
rim ditch, a lot of them said that, you know, it's it's not, it's deep for Florida, but it's not like deep what we're used to seeing. It's it's in that 10 to 12 really foot range. Came right up to Fish it. are on the bottom, but when you get them active, yeah, they gone. can come up and start to hang in the in the water column. But so jerk cool. bait, Damiki, but also shaky head still has worked. And there's other things that you can employ because it's not really that deep. So it, they both seem to be firing up, but think about it. That canal, it's around the lake. It is not connected to the water that Scott's fishing in. There's a dam that's yeah, separating. Oh, yeah. They're locking Locks, into oh, no that doubt. dam. So it's almost like a different lake. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? It's a different body of Which water. Which means the opportunity to replenish isn't as readily available, maybe, as oh, some of these other areas. that huge. But, but I'm saying, like, that's a wide, it expansive is. area oh. where a lot of fish could move to for Scott, and here it's a... It's He's that, fishing for resident, whatever's yeah. living in that canal. That's Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, they may replenish, but not, like, daily. Like, they're not. They're going to have a waves come up to that, maybe. Maybe that's what's hurt the... His bags have gotten smaller Just, yeah. each day. Because they said that was their only thing. I said, do you have another place that you found that's like that you can go? And he said, nah, it's all. That's This is what we're doing. Been a little bit since we've checked in with Matt Adams. Came out blazing this morning. Like that, I don't know what that. That's a big one. Get out of there. Get out of there. Stay on there, baby. Stay on there. Stay on there. I don't think she's real big, but she's a good one. I haven't seen her real good yet. She ain't that big, but she might help. I thought that fish was better than that when I hooked her. It's so hard on this rod because it, they all feel big. It's my help, I don't know. Got a two pounder to cause. Won't, won't be a whole lot of help, if any. Probably. She's fat, but. Oddly big, small fish, that's the thing. Yeah. Big small fish. The biggest little fish you can find. I thought she was bigger than that when she bit it. She acted like she's big. She thought she was big. All right. Clear. She needs to be bigger than two five. I don't think she is. Two four. Clear it again. Plain with ounces. Two four. Not gonna help. Yeah, I mean we're in a we're just in a backwater area, um, in an area down known as the monkey box. It's a you know it's an area that these fish should be moving into to spawn. Once again, you know that's a male. Um, just a backwater pool. It's very clear water. Water color in here is great. So it's it's exactly what you're looking for. You, know, you just hope that it's the females that's moved up and not the males. You know. There's another fish over there on that tree, too. She rolled underneath it when I threw it that, so I don't know if that's a female that's over there with her, maybe. That one blew up. It wanted it. It, it, it didn't play with it at all. Greg, you were talking about names earlier. You can go through Bass Track and see who what the live leaderboard is now, and also it gives you the rest of the results from 11th to 200th, how it finished. But Andrew Loberg, I don't know if you know him, but from the West Coast as well. I do. I, I covered him in college some. He's, he got out of here with a check. He's in that top 45, top 50 range. He'll be one to watch that maybe people don't know about as much. For sure. That kind of goes back to what, that's the reason I'm saying that. I, I, there's too many good guys in the top 50 this week. Yeah. that are going to be hard, that probably are not going to have disasters, you know? So if you had one this week, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Scott has not had a disaster one bit today. Yeah. 
participate in the EQs is either going to be a success or an education, one way or another. It's a, it's a, it's a big thing to take on, but man, oh man. You're either going to win or you're going to learn. You win or learn, absolutely. Which is not exactly the same as a win-win, but that's the way it is. Scott Martin, the man in charge. In the catbird seat. In the catbird seat, big time here. Begging. Headed for his first Bassmaster. Oh gosh, dude. He's got the breaking record. Yeah, the biggest one. single day opens bag today is going to be close to being in the top five as well. And he could be the big bass of the tournament if this that one is, it, is over. Woo! 10 pounds, three ounces. Woo! We'll see. What's it take to be a five? Clean sweet. What's the biggest? 31. 31, 31 is the smallest. Is the, fifth place. the fifth place. Yeah. You may end up with two. Got rid of a one pounder. Oh my gosh, bro. That is the Bassmasters Classic, baby. That's a call right there. Scott Ooh, Martin. Darling. A dream he does Today not want to wake up from. Wow. We'll go right away and come right back. St. Croix Bassmaster open at Lake Okeechobee. Boy, this is it, the final day. Been a great tournament. Three days of action to get a big year for the Opens underway. In this iconic place, Lake Okeechobee, and, and well, the appropriate guy. <laughs> Some home cooking deluxe here. Scott Martin, big, big, big tournament here, has beaten the field each and every day. That's, there's domination, and then there's beyond domination, and this is starting to look like beyond domination right here for Scott Martin. Hats off to him for just a superlative effort. And there's more fishing to come. He could he could pile on some more. Brandon McMillan has an hour and 10 minutes to catch and <coughs> cut that 40 and a half pound deficit to minimal. He's got, he's better start now. 40 pounds, that's crazy. Don't do it. She might help. Not a bad one. <clears throat> I seen her on the back side. There's another one with them. Come here. Would that be right? 44 years ago was the first Bassmaster tournament on Lake Okeechobee? Yeah. 44 years ago. Yeah. Mm. Scott's only 48. Yeah. Maybe. He was four years old when Daddy when, fished in 1980 mm -hmm. on one of the first one. I think they said that's what made him set up camp down there, the old Martin or Marina right after that. They decided to move down there. I'm surprised 81, that it I took think. us so long to have a first BASS event at Okeechobee. Yeah, I, I'm too. I was, scrolling, I'm I was really. scrolling way back early to see, and 1980 was the first time I saw one. So it would have been about 10 she years, 11 really. years. Would have been 11 years, right? Something like that. I think even 1968. Yeah, 68. He was doing tournaments. 12. You know, he started at least 12. Yeah. yeah. Before before the classic, you know, he was doing four or five tournaments a year. And, you know, places like you fall on Table Rock. And, Which a, a little shameless promo. If you haven't seen in the episodes of the cast detailing the foundations and start of bass and then the 80s and 90s eras and then the superstars like Hank Parker and Rick mm -hmm. Clun coming up very soon and big. Jimmy Houston, Roland Martin, those stories are all told there. And plus more is to come. I was watching Hank Parker this morning before I drove into work here. Did you? Yeah. That's a good yes, one. Yes, sir, the cast, yeah. What time did you wake up if you're watching uh -oh, all uh -oh. the cast? I just turned on oh, the gosh, dude. I got, her. Too quiet. I got her, bro. She's the monster, dude. Oh, wow. Why stop? Oh, my gosh. break his own record that he set the first day of the event. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> D 
dude. 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 Has anybody bought them yet on Tackle Warehouse? <laughs> I'm just asking. Oh my gosh, bro. Magical. What do you have to say for yourself? I, I don't even know, man. I mean, this is just like, I'm not even driving right now, bro. This is the man of, upstairs. The Lord has been good to me over the years. And it's just a blessing. It's a true blessing. So many people are praying for me. My wife's just been praying hard. She's been just doing everything she can. And thank you, Lord. Wow. Wow. What is it now? Two and a half, right? It's over here. Another six pound coal, at least. How much weight does he have, Sue? He'll have 94 with that. He's 93.7 on bass track with that, a seven pounder. 34 pounds, eight ounces on the day, but we believe it's probably a little bit more. So now he has two of the all t the top five all time. Yes, he's knocking out AJ Slagona yeah. from Toho. I, I mean, I'll say we might. I mean, I'd wow. like to see us break it. I don't know what lakes, lakes we could go to to break the this opens record now. You're going to one, Santee Cooper. In March? Yeah. I mean, you hit Santee Cooper on the head when we were there, when yeah, Preston yeah, set the yeah, all-time yeah. record for mm -hmm. the, you beat that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe not with that many nines, but it'll just be Put limits of sixes. At Scott Martin and his fast track, 609098 There's another one I don't know if that was a big one or not. But. <laughs> So a 10 pounder gives him a hundred pound, a, a yes. nine and a half pounder. One more nine and a half pounder and he's going to break a hundred for three. Eight. Oh my Bro. God. <laughs> hey man, that's unbelievable, dude. I'm glad I was here to see this. I tell you what, I love this lake. I know I keep saying it, but I, this is like a, this is like my family. I started an organization called Anglers for Lake Okeechobee, APLO. And I want everybody to do me a favor, if you don't mind. There's not a lot of people that live around this lake. Smallest population probably in the state of Florida. Got a lot of people on the coast, a lot of money on the coast. We need everyone that's watching this to go to Anglers for Lake Okeechobee, Instagram and Facebook, and follow our page. If you've ever fished this lake, if you've ever wanted to fish this lake, be part of the conversation. We're putting on there all the time how we need to put funding. We need Governor DeSantis to earmark some major funding, millions of dollars for funding inside Lake Okeechobee. We need vegetation back in this lake. We need habitat back in this lake. We have to protect not only the businesses and the small towns around this lake, but we have to protect these fish. They have rights too. This is a natural lake. They didn't build this lake. God built this lake. And there's no reason we should be destroying this lake just because we don't have a better idea. We spend billions of dollars around this lake we need to spend millions of dollars in this lake. So I challenge the governor to do that. And I just ask everybody watching this, write the governor, write the South Florida Water Management, write the Corps of Engineers, and let them know that Lake Okeechobee is worth saving. Wow, what will it be like when they get it back right? Yeah. <laughs> It's just still, I, I keep saying in my head, he is a nine and a half pounder from breaking 100 pounds for three days of fishing. It's only been done twice. <laughs> what is that in history? And that was the, the TTBC. Keep going. Yeah, five and, or something. And the, yeah. the east-west fish. Yeah. I'm not going to two pounder and added five. Yeah. He happened to be sitting by the guy who yeah. broke it once. We need to tell Jake to tell him, hey, uh, you're like seven sorry. pounds from 100. Just go, just go do it. Find a 10 Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we're, we're pretty close. I don't think we're two pounds off. This is, this is why I'm glad we're here. Thank you for being here, Greg. Thanks, I'm, Tommy. I'm Thank glad to be here. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for inviting and me. And I'll gotta give a shout out right now. Okay. I gave a shout out to Lou's, which was awesome. Beat down outdoors is the mounts that I have on this boat. And as you can tell, 
I have full control of these mounts, full control. I can move them based on the glare. I can lift it. I have a pole I can add to this and lift it up high if I want. I can do anything I want with this thing, full control, and it is slick. Beat down, it's the best mount I've ever seen in my life. These mounts right here are fully adjustable as well. I have these knobs. I can move these around different positions. I can open this up and move it like this. That's awesome. I can slide it back and forth on this, on this rail. Full control of your mounts all the time. And that's awesome. So beat down outdoors. If you have a boat and you want to have a nice graph mount, full control, check them out. By far the coolest thing I've ever, ever seen with a graph mount. I'll say beat down. You bring in the beat down. I want to pick on Brandon McMillan, but but you're about Martin's to. Martin's doubled him almost. <laughs> it's just one of those days. I'm okay with being doubled up if the guy's going to do what he's doing. Like, no, just go ahead. Yeah. You know what? Hey, I was there. If you win the race, just do some donuts. You know. <laughs> Climb the fence. This is, uh, this, this whole day has been a highlight reel. I mean, I mean start to finish, start to finish is an absolute highlight reel. Even although it did not start that quickly for Scott Martin. It, honestly, yeah. I thought there was an outside chance that he could yeah. get beat the way the day we started. We all thought there about 8.30 that, that was a possibility. Whoa. You stressed it though through the first two days that uh, man, patience is the key Woo! out here. Don't get up and go, you know, running around. Wait him out. I mean, think about what he's done all week. Crazy. Like every day has been like but this for him. We just caught a That's... monster, dude. And to think that his bass track has him at 93 and a half pounds, and we probably think a six is a seven, and we think a nine and a half could be a ten and change. He could he, be a 35. He could be. He could be an eight pounder instead of a nine and a half for breaking a hundred. So we've never seen Got something it. like this for a designated open event Big for cra smashing every oh record. Gosh, and the Big way he's head doing head. it. Oh man, it is. It's, and to think people were ashamed and they were, they were mocking it. Locals were with their posts that, that there were 60 or 70 boats in this area throughout the tournament and saying, you know, why are we so crowded doing this to ourselves? Blah, blah. If anyone got a little taste of some big bites in some areas, and to think that he is still catching big ones, this is the best spot on the lake. And this he's week. seeing a lot of big ones he's not catching. You can tell he said on several that he never got to bite. This is the Bass Masters Classic, baby. Insane. That really is, that right. looks like something Photoshopped Suzanne, to me. How about that? <laughs> it's unbelievable. That's oh, a shin bounder. AI. Yeah, I 100%, that's got it. I 100% agree. Other guys have had some big moments as well. Matt Adams had a big one from earlier this morning. Randall Tharp's had some big moments. To think of what Scott Martin's done, and I asked him that on the phone last night, just to win your first BASS Gosh, dude, event at her. home. I got her, bro. She's a monster, dude. Would be something incredible. And he says, I saw my dad win in 1991, and I was a teenager, and I said I wanted to do this. And to be able to do this with my mom still around, my dad still like a prominent figure at <laughs> Rollins in Clewiston, <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> Absolutely. Hats off to Okeechobee. Greg Hackney made the point earlier today. This we're seeing this on a lake that gets maximum pressure and has been getting it for a hundred years. And it's getting it right now. You still see a lot of even though there are not a lot of competitors out there right now, there's a lot of fishermen out there right oh, now. Shiner fishermen and everybody. And, know, and I mean, it's it never ends. daily. Yeah, Every day. That's, that's 365. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Ronnie, would you say it's the best lake in Florida? Today, this week? <laughs> but I, I think, you know, I would say that overall, the Harris chain was, in a lot of people's minds, passing it. You know, it, it seemed really rock steady. Uh, That's a solid Toho start, and Kissimmee man. always have the, their like moments. The cold, uh, St. John's has been today. in the limelight, Okeechobee as well, but they, the Okeechobee's got them. If they, if they so just they, have some stuff to hide around, it would look like the jungle it used to, but I, I would agree just per capita how big this place is, it has the capabilities of not being the best lake in Florida in the country. Well, you know, even on bad years, it's good. 
We, we, we've mm. never really like been there when it was Maybe bad. Maybe one more. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Big one. I just caught another big one. Just crazy. Epic day. I think it's the biggest bag I've ever caught. I think it's bigger than what I had the other day, which is crazy. But we're just going to keep fishing. We have about another hour. No, we've got about another 40 minutes. And then we need to head in. There is another local in our top tens. Laboring hard today, not quite getting the results that Scott Martin has had, but nobody has. But definitely a favorite. Would yeah. have been a favorite coming into the event. Yes, he definitely would. But whatever. There's another one. Big one. That's a giant. That's a giant. Get out of that crap. Another nine, maybe. Wouldn't be surprised. Must have had a really good spot. Oh, he come off. Mm. Oh, no. Pressure. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That was a sure enough tank. Two pounds. Oh, damn, that was a big one, dog. There he is, he got it, he got it right there as he come off that crap. You notice the flip-flops? We haven't seen any of those today. It's the first No, pair. that's right. Yeah. Sunny Florida. Lipless bait? Yeah, I'm McMillan said here. last night he is a huge advocate of a lipless over a Get chatter. He's not a chatterbait guy. He loves throwing a lipless if he's going to wind offshore or around <laughs> offshore stuff in Florida. Well, before the chatterbait was a mainstay yeah. in Florida. Was a lipless bait. He said he can't go wrong with a black and under gold. the dang boat. <sighs> She's hung in the boat. I got her. I got her. I got her now. This, I look like a retard. I mean, an absolute retard. I got her though. Choke that trap again. Oh, it may happen right here. How much time we got? Oh. He seems rushed. Just got it down her throat. I got none on cold. chance to talk to, of course, all of our top 10 today, our EQ Elite Qualifying hopefuls, and they gave us a few words about why they're doing it. The ultimate goal is to make the Elite Series, and that's something that I've 
been wanting to do for a long time, and I finally, you know, made the jump to try to do it this year. That's definitely a goal to uh, to try to make the Elite Series, but it's going to be so tough. Get up in here. To be on the Elites probably mean everything. It's kind of my goal. I don't even know how to describe the feeling I'd get if I if I qualified. Obviously, my goal is, you know, to qualify for the Elite Series, but one of the bigger goals to me is kind of become winning one of these to get to go to the Classic. I really would like to win one, um, so you can just Let's get them go. both done in one season, go to the Classic and the Elite Series. That's a perfect season. I'm due. I really look forward to the challenge. Like, I know that sounds crazy, but like, that's why I'm here, for the challenge of qualifying for the Elite Series and then hopefully walking across that Classic stage one day. It's the St. Croix Bassmaster Open, first one of the year, Lake Okeechobee, presented by Seven. Live coverage presented by Daiwa. It's a flawless day, beautiful pictures all day long, but the content is what really has set this thing on fire. Scott Martin with an incredible, incredible day. Even topping his first day, over 33 pounds his first day. He may be over 35, 36 at this point right now. It's all. It all becomes legal when we get to the weigh-in, and the weigh-in is coming up at 3 o'clock local time, 3 o'clock Eastern time. I just actually check in, and the weigh-in soon to follow after that. Scott's got about a half an hour more fishing time left. So think of the possibilities of what else could happen out there today. Tucker Smith, everyone else is doing their best to, to keep up, but they have done good work. They have done themselves a huge, huge service by being Fisherman on finals on the final day on championship Saturday. Sam George. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. He's got a little bit of meat to him. <coughs> A lot of fishermen having good days today, but only one fisherman having yeah, the yeah. right day. <laughs> <clears throat> the man in the catbird seat. Oh he was sitting in it when he got oh here, and he never one. got out of it. He is what they call a singularity out there today. There's only one, <clears throat> one guy, as you say, Greg, that has gone that far above the, the standard. He helps a little bit. You would have to believe that he'll catch, he'll cull one more time in the last 30 minutes. Yeah. They're, they're biting. He's you know, got so. a, what, what, a three pounder? Still the right. yeah. He has a three pounder, smallest, the smallest fish. Yeah. I mean, it would take a 10 to push him around 100. Yep. He's at 93 and change, so it would take a 10 pounder to get him, and that's if. He may have a little more weight than we think. I think yeah. above an eight pounder, he'd be close. You think above an eight pounder? I mean, well, which? if he's got the, if it's actually a three, and he gets an eight, then he's 93 seven now on bass truck, closer maybe to 95 even. So an eight pounder may get him there. Ninety-three seven for three days. The best it's a 31 two pound open average. Single days ever. 31 pound average <laughs> right now. <laughs> well, in the in the uh, elite last year, there was only one bag over 30 pounds. I think in the two, seven, 2017 elite, there were two maybe 30 pound bags. That probably won't come off either. I knew that was coming. You know, but again, but it's all about the conditions. They just had the perfect storm this yep. week in that it, they had the cool front and then the weather got really stable. Longest cast I can make and gets hung up. You can read those comments yesterday and the day before after the weigh-in, everybody talking about seeing them coming and going and traffic picking up at the end of the day.
I'm not going to make it to it, am I? You know, I shouldn't ask for any more, but I was kind of thinking we might see a little bit of that frog in action today. I was kind of <laughs> looking forward to that. Ronnie made mention to it this morning that somebody was... I think it was McMillan. A couple, couple guys, McMillan had caught one on it. A couple guys had mixed in. And we saw Sam, Sam George, George get said it. One. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I so wanted did, uh, to see him lock it in his hand. Oh, yeah. Might as well now. We should let so him dumb. know Scott's 55 pounds that. ahead. You just lock it in your hand. Yeah, just now. pick up a frog. Just we just want to see frogs. <laughs> so dumb. Blow ups on a frog now. I believe the only three-day event that ever broke 90 pounds that just for all of fishing happened like way back when the A-Rig was allowed at the semi-pro level. All right. The first year it came out for uh, I'm scared of this one. You know, the Everstarts or something. It was like 91 or 92 pounds. And that was the first event, Gunnersville, A-Rig, and uh, I caught 110 at Falcon. I hadn't been wanting to say that, but on I what? am on a big worm. Wait, when you say for three days? East-West fish off, that's how I got to the FLW. Oh, no, oh, I'm saying, yes. Just, I'm just saying yeah, for yeah, three yeah. days. There's only two times it's been 100. Keith Combs at Fork yeah. and myself at Falcon. Those are only two hmm. that broke 100. In three-day events, I think. In three-day events. Yeah. Yeah, I've never caught 100 in four days. I've so uh, only done it in three. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. Go figure. <laughs> that Lends the question to the first two elites this season. You think you got a century belt in you? I, you know, I've always thought that, but it's never worked out. So maybe I set my goals too high. I don't know. I definitely think we could. There's several events this year where there's potential. We will, you know, that could see a hundred. No, no doubt to lead a bin. I mean, to lead a bin has this fish class and also. They occasionally catch 13 and 14 pounders out of Toledo Bend. Well, that is the and lake in, record last year is 15 plus. Yeah, it, and it's in really, really good shape. You know, the lake is in good shape. So there's potential there. And of course, we know Fork. Sure. About every time they go, seems like Lee catches 100. <laughs> or Patrick Walters. <laughs> yeah. But there's a couple guys nah, there that seem to. Care uh, Fuck Cat. Yep. If you're telling Ronnie to and then pick his that, fantasy team for Fork, you, you, you tell him to put Lee Livesey on it? Yeah, I messed yeah. up last year. I was trying to be too sneaky. So like, I want to pick people. That... We, know, we know Lee Livesey's going to catch them, but I'm just going to pick some other people. And I was like, I don't, I don't know what I was doing. Where else, where else uh, Greg? 100 pounds St. Lawrence? That's it. So really, I, I think we're probably lim limited to those three of venues for 100 pounds. The first two and then the last one. I, I don't really foresee any other place being quite. I mean, the, the other places are going to produce, but it, you see, I mean, it takes oh, such yeah. a special oh, yeah. place. To think, to, that, to think that if Scott catches 28, he could easily break 100 today, but he only catches 25 yesterday. Like, 25 is your bad day. You're like, oh, that's, mm -hmm. holy cow. But think about this. If this was a four-day event, what's he got? He's just got to get, oh, yeah. catch one tomorrow. Oh, he's no got doubt. 100. <laughs> We've had a few like that when when fighter had 75 plus at St. Clair, and I think Malax as well, right there. He they were on pace, but those were three day events. On smallmouth. Yeah, smallmouth. Yeah, when you go to a smallmouth fishery, you take the eight pound bite out of the equation. You're not catching eight pounders. They're catching oh yeah five pounders, five and three quarters. Yeah, you know to do that. You have to catch 25s. Yeah, 25 pounders. 25 pounders. When does, Champlain, when does Champlain scare 100? Because it's getting more and more it, and bigger and bigger. Is it limited on its it mat? Are we close? Uh, it, just, it seems like almost a different species of smallmouth. We don't, it doesn't produce the number. It's lots of four-pounders. You know, they're the, I mean, they just, I don't know that you can catch 25-pounders out mm -hmm. of them. Not that they're not there, of course, but again, it takes it's an overabundance yeah. of that fish to produce, you know what I mean? Because you're not going to catch every five pounder. Man, our guest analyst picked to be the biggest success among the 
returning or, or trying to return Elite Series anglers. I mean, he definitely has a uh, big one. A big one. Oh, stay hooked up, baby. That kid named Turner. That's a big fish, I believe. Stay on. I don't feel nothing, which is not very big fish like. Dude, all I see is that weed. Dad gum it. <sighs> Fuck. God dang it, dude. Right there on that point of eelgrass. I had, dude, I had her. When I set the hook into her, dude, she went. Freaking right in the weeds. That's all I'm going to keep this thing in my hand. It's Seems like he might not be cool. quite as refined as he used to be while he's fishing a Bassmaster. Wherever he's been, it must be a little rougher area. Yeah, coarse. It's a little more coarse. A little, a little coarse, a little rough around the edge. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> we all go through periods. We do. Yeah. yeah, we do. We've all been there. Yep. Fucking like no boats around, dude. It's just time. It's just time for them to bite. 214. I gotta piss him so bad I can hardly stand it, dude. <laughs> hey, Brandon, you should one let him days. know that he's live. You know, that's don't be. Yeah, well, no, no, don't yeah. tell him. <laughs> <laughs> since we're, since uh, we're shooting for records today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't tell him. It's, it's awesome. I will say on Wednesday at the meeting, I said, <laughs> just know if once you get mic'd up, you're live the whole thing. <laughs> I did say that. Uh, maybe he knows he's live. <laughs> that's that's just, another just wants approach. To be, yeah. Pushing the envelope. Gain some fans. Keeping it real. He j keeping it real, yeah. Oh, he's still talking, Stay but I can't hear him. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I wear one. Clips are moving. Fits tight. <laughs> yeah, I just got, I've worked for Grundens, and I, he emailed me the other day. They got a new, which they have one I love, but they, he said they got a new one he's sending me. I'll be there when I get home. Doesn't Thart live on the, he lives on the west coast of Florida? North, lives on the north western. part, yeah, yeah. sort of the, the, I guess you'd say the extreme eastern part of the panhandle, is that how you say it? Right at the bend. For who? What do they call the big bend? Where Tharp lives at Port St. Joe there. Oh, Port St. Joe, oh, Cedar Keys right in the yeah. corner. I, I thought he lived Port there. Port St. Lucie, which is, no, East of Port Okeechobee, Saint but Joe. if he's Port St. Joe, then yeah, he's up in the armpit. The armpit. <laughs> that's, that's, they call, I, not as a even negative. Even better, but right? that's yeah. just, it looks like, an, you know. I mean, right, yeah. he never skipped yeah. a beat on it. Armpit. Yeah. yeah he lives a, in the armpit. It's like the ar it's like an arm <laughs> hanging on the end of a couch, you know, it's just right there. We like it here in the armpit. Is it hairy? <laughs> Is it a hairy armpit? <laughs> no, I think that, you not know. Not since that hurricane. Was yeah, kind of give it a buzz. Yeah. Yeah, because the last hurricane hit uh, that's, yeah, they got hit that real Cedar hard. Key yeah. area. Yeah, it was rough. like that's absolutely. Yeah, relatives who live near there, which was kind of old Florida. You know, it, that area was still pretty. You know, hasn't yeah, it wasn't, wasn't as touristy. You know, right, hadn't been built right. up as much as. Boy, with bass, Tharp is one three quarters of a million. The other circuit, he's got 2.3 million. Seven wins. He's got four wins over here. Just the sheer number of years and, and tournaments fished here is so much smaller. But when he's connected with wins, they, like it's just so frequent. His win rate here is versus the amount of time finished or fished is crazy. These are unofficial. 
Results per Bass Trek. Scott Martin with a six, a nine, a nine and a half, a three, and a seven. We have him set at 93 pounds and seven ounces for three days of fishing and not done yet. Behind him, Tucker Smith, Randall Tharp, Paul Marks, Matt Adams, Easton Fothergill. Having a good tournament here. Austin Cranford, George Browning, and the rest, and we will be right back. Oh, there's that frog. Yeah. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> we are yeah. back. Oh, Scott Martin, I understand, is the operator of that frog. Greed uh, right there. That's yeah, all that man, is. That is <laughs> piling on. That's we love it. He said I've caught a nine on a spinning rod, I've caught a nine on a bay caster. Now let's just catch a nine on top water. I, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if this nets us one more. Top water bite starts to turn on at 67, 68 degrees on this lake. And that's where we're at right now. I'm a, I can even see a lot more bait. There's bait fish swimming around in here and everything. Also, Greg, we were talking about the three-day possible century club and, you know, the 45-pound all-time limit record, things that like that. busted right there. All of those things happened before up right there. live coverage. And so it's almost like Wilt Chamberlain's 100-point game in the NBA. We don't have anything but the still photo of him holding a piece of paper. I don't even know if he made a basket that night. He's holding a piece of paper that says 100 pounds or 100 points. But so when you see somebody score 80 in a game now or seven, like this footage, we've never seen before someone get to that mark. And so what we're seeing here is something we've never been able to see in the live era of fishing. Just like live a sea of fork, catching 43 pounds. That's and watched it go down live. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's closest we've ever seen to a all-time record type thing or a never been done before thing. But look now, at all the fish he's caught, and look at all the boats fishing in the... <laughs> I mean, it's a community hole. Yeah. I mean, he's fixing to catch close to 100 pounds in three days. Basically, out of not no... You would think Scott Martin would have... Well, he knows everything. He's got a secret area. Yeah. But he doesn't. He's and just right whooped, in the middle of everybody. And whooped everybody. I the mean, fact that them. no one else was in, the, in this area in the top ten, five or six people maybe survived, but no. If you're just checking in, your Saturday has uh, brought you back in the house and you want to check in on what's going on. Here's what has happened today with Scott Martin. Started the day with an eight-pound lead. Had a actually slow couple of three hours to start the day and then it turned on. I mean, he's never looked back. Oh. You're not going to believe what you're going to see. Just one fish at a time, baby. Just, just one say? fish at a time. What did you just say? Just one that one fish broke at the ice. Felt good. And then came the deluge. crazy but we just caught a monster dude yeah I love it I love, I love this lake man <laughs> Woo. that's what we needed got him big and oh my gosh dude Bigger than the other one. It's a 10 pounder, dude. You got him. That is it, baby! Woo! Woo! That's it! Woo! Yeah. 
Got rid of a one pounder. Oh my gosh, bro. That is the Bassmasters Classic, baby. <laughs> Darling, Suzanne, how about that? Oh, she's been praying on her butt off. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh gosh, dude, I got her. I got her, bro. She's the monster, dude. <laughs> Magical. Magical. I think we've run out of superlatives. I mean, that, how many ways can we say that is an incredible display of giant fish, the likes of which you rarely ever see? Such, such a treat to have you all with us here today, uh, to witness all this going down at the final day of this, uh, of this uh, open event on Lake Okeechobee. Once again, let's hear it for Greg Hackney, who has been here to walk us through this today and, uh, and have through it. We're not, we're not quite done yet, but man, <clears throat> Greg, what a day. It's been a great day to sit here and watch bass fishing, <laughs> I promise you that. Yeah. It's been a while since I've seen that. <laughs> that many nine pounder, 10 pounders, eight pounders, six pounders. It's been all day long. That just does not happen. Of course, the, the, the big fish, the win for Scott Martin, his qu classic qualification, he's already, he did not have to worry about EQ. He's already in the Bassmaster Elite Series. But uh, the other big story during the course of, of this week and, and this uh, beginning of the Open uh, Series is, uh, has been the EQs and the anglers making the, the commitment to all nine events in hopes of finding a pathway to the Bassmaster Elite Series. Let's speak to someone, one of the newest members of the Bassmaster Elite Series, and that would be JT Tompkins. JT, thanks for being with us there. Congratulations as being the points winner for the 2023 EQ. And, and, and have you been able to watch what's going down today? Oh yeah, I mean, I took a com I've been taking a couple of days off the water to watch this madness, and it's just been a pleasure to watch, you know, the greats like Scott Martin and also having, you know, Greg Hagney on live. I love watching just all these guys and having them all for the tournament like this. This is why I take days off the water just to watch this. And I've been enjoying every second of it. It's been the most ridiculous, you know, eight hours of fishing I've probably ever witnessed before. The, those other those other anglers are the rest of our top ten there who are EQ hopefuls. Tell us, from your experience, what does it mean? How important is, is it for them to have done what they've done to be fishing on this day? Yeah, I mean, when you got a marathon like you do with nine tournaments, getting off to a great start is always a very important factor in, you know, the rest of your year. Because if you get a good start in the beginning, it kind of, it, it'll light the fire underneath you. And it also, it lets you know, hey, I can do this. You know, I can make it. If I, you know, if I have just a few more tournaments like this, I can really put together a great season and, and pull this out. So getting that confidence going early and, you know, you know, figuring out how to keep that momentum going and going over nine events is a big deal. So for guys like Tucker Smith, Easton, you know, Sam George, all these guys are just doing such a good job. Paul Marks, I mean, the list goes on of EQ guys that are giving themselves just a fantastic shot right off the bat. Well, JT, I got to witness on live the last couple of events of the season, your domination, a 17th place average uh, to make the Elite Series absolutely phenomenal. And you still were barely ahead of John Garrett and the rest of the gang because how good they did. Tell me about your first event last year because it was a two-day weather-shortened event. And I believe, if, if I'm wrong, correct me, that was your worst finish of the year. So you got better from the first event. You actually went back out on Eufaula after the tournament to practice and get better at it. So tell me how you kind of handled a little bit of a setback in a different kind of tournament to start and then did so well events two through nine. Yeah, so I don't know why this has been the case for me every single year, but my first event has always been my worst event. Every single year I've been a bass fisherman. I don't know why it's happened like that. I don't know if it takes me a while to get in the groove or what it is, but I knew if I could just – prevent a bomb in that tournament and that's kind of what i was able to do so that, honestly knowing the way i fish that gave me confidence that hey if, if this is like technically going to be my worst finish it's about to be a good season and you know I, of course i stayed after the event you know figured out what i did wrong and you know what i figured out is that typically when you're in these first tournaments it's around the spawn and i don't make great decisions when it comes to understanding how these fish move up and down off the bed and once i kind of figured that out and was able to get past it you know, I, I mean, it's just the way I know that I 
finish in my beginning, just let me know that we're going to be good the rest of the season and this is going to be my worst finish. So. So, JT, I know you spent a lot of time on the water practicing for the uh, for the open events, you know, going from lake to lake. Mm -hmm. Have you had the opportunity to prepare for the elites the same way? I'm actually cast this is away from Fork right now. So I'm sitting in the campground at Fork in the Road RV, and I you know, can't be on the water at Fork anymore. You know, it was really upsetting, but I did get to spend a good bit of time on Fork in Toledo. You know, not as much time on Toledo because we had the ice storms and stuff, and I didn't get out on the water till late this year because, you know, working out sponsors and stuff and trying to get all that stuff put together. But, no, I spent – I think five days on Fork and, you know, three or four days on Toledo. And I'm going to have plenty of time on all the other lakes. But right now I'm working on live scoping, going around the little small lakes around here, just enjoying myself in Texas while I wait to get my boat wrapped and some other things. But, no, I've definitely been able to put some time in, and I'm excited to see what happens this year. Is there any one body of water that we're going to go to this year that you're looking the most forward to? Well, I was really looking forward to Harris Chain, I but I heard there was a pretty, pretty big fish kill there. And, you know, I don't know. I feel like I understand that chain pretty decent. If I can just put together, you know, figure out how this lake has changed from the last few years and use my experience to my benefit, hopefully I can put together a new pattern that maybe, you know, hasn't worked in the past on different chains. So I'm excited about that one. And, man, Fork is probably the most fun I've ever had bass fishing in four or five days. So Fork and St. Lawrence River, those are my three tournaments that I'm really looking forward to. Well, Murray as well, good. being close to my house, but I've never fished out of my own boat there. So, Well, we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to have you. I think that uh, great things in your future. I'm excited. JT, great job once again. Congratulations <laughs> on beating 174 super tough anglers over the course of nine events. And, and hey, hats off to you. Now you get to go at it with against this guy, against Craig Hackney. So uh, <laughs> you, got, you got a great year ahead of you. We've, we will follow it with great interest, and we'll see you out there on the Elite Series. The great JT Tompkins, our last year's Elite Qualifier Points winner. <clears throat> Meanwhile. Back out on Lake Okeechobee, it's a, it's a quiet after the storm, I'd say, right now. Has Scott not caught another one yet? He's not caught another one. <laughs> He's eating that sandwich. Last time we left, the frog was popping, and we yeah. were waiting. <laughs> well, we made it happen on this day. 3, 34, 35, something like that. <laughs> it was a good day. <laughs> He's a, <laughs> he has to laugh. <laughs> That's right. Huh? Yeah. Sharp, sharp kid, good family. JT, you know, his cousin Jacob still in the opens. His dad, Timmy, fished the tour for a long time and then jumped in the opens. But um, JT Last said cast. college fishing, go. you know, wasn't for him. He, he had won a decent sized tournament in South Carolina when he was in high school. And he said, you know, I'm just going to I'm just going to try to fish tournaments. And obviously he he's had lots bets. of success. Yeah. Yes, he's, he has. He's won at the Harris chain. He has. So I knew that would be the place he would pick. <laughs> Which he does, and in other tournament events, everything he's fished there, he's done really well. He had a new sponsor hat on and a new new sponsor shirt. So All right, let's go. You know, the elites will do that for you. What Great. a fantastic blessing of a day. I talked to JT after him winning the EQs, and, and he said, I may get home for Christmas for two or three days. I'm scouting for the elites. So watch out for him. Oh, yeah, he. you know, that's the same way he approached the Opens. He was went from one to the next. Even at the end of the year, when it was Watts Bar, Ozarks back to back, and then we had a month before Harris Chain, he had already done so well he locked up the qualification. Like he could have he could have not caught anything and still made it and started to poke around at Elite Lakes before you're ever even qualified. That's like Scott Martin pre scout in the twenty twenty five classic and we hadn't even announced it yet. He's just He can just start <laughs> jumping around yeah. I mean <laughs> I might places. get lucky. I get you lucky. Know? Yes. It's like a dartboard. 
My man. <laughs> fired awesome. up, son. I mean, fired up. I wonder if he ever got a chance to go to the bathroom. <laughs> he was struggling with that a while ago. Good question. I think would fork just go off limits. Right, we got one for y'all. Or is, I think it was like the 29th, so that's why he's taking the last few days off because he fished up to the last date of pre-practice, and then now he's just been hanging out nearby until we are at Toledo in a few weeks. Yeah, I'm not sure when it went off limits. When's the last time you pre-practiced for a lake for the elites? I went to Grand in December. Well, the classic's different. That's a you want to, but like for a regular elite series event, never, 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 not in 20. This will be 20 years. <laughs> wow. I just, I don't. Great. You never. No, no, pre, that's I, crazy. I, I, I don't. Uh, and, I, and I'm sure it's hurt me some, but I like to uh, fish by the seat of my pants. Well, I don't think anyone in their right mind is going to question that with the success rate well, we've seen. Well, sometimes I've you know? questioned it, you know, because I'm like, <laughs> these guys spend so much time, you know, fishing these lakes, and I get there and never at, I got two and a half days. So I'm like, yeah. Uh, but in a way, I, I kind of like that. You don't want to find, you don't want to have too many patterns going. There were, there were guys when there was unlimited practice time available for opens, like guys like David Williams, even Randall Tharp. I don't want to fish four or five days of practice because I'll have too many patterns going. I, I'll be, splitting myself too many ways. If I, if I do two and a half, I find one or two things and I just lean into those things instead of having five things going. One of them's rising up and happening now. One of them's fading away and you're trying to interpret which one's still holding steady. You're wondering if someone else is using the third one. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I don't know. Seems and like you'd want an index card with the 10 important things to remember instead of a stack of notes that looks oh, like the no family Bible, it. right? But it, it's kind of fishing has changed to the way that it's almost now the guys who do spend all of that time like that, they, they have an advantage. I, but I don't, here's the deal, I don't really have time to do that even if I wanted to. You, you know what I mean, I, it's not, yeah. I'm not going to be able to spend a month at a time at these places. I have some other obligations. Yeah, oh, of course. I mean, well, I mean, that's the thing. I will say a lot of negativity about the young kids in the opens having the ability to travel and fish, going lake to lake, and how fortunate they are. That may be true, but everyone has everyone's had a time when they were a kid and had more time. Right now, now we're adults. We got family. We have obligations. We have responsibilities. But that's the deal: is these kids maybe don't have sponsor obligations, but because of the preparation they're doing, when they catch them so good, they will transition into that, and they'll be pulled to yeah, this expo. Life changes. That expo. It happens to yeah. everyone. Yes. And if you fish all day, every day, and don't have sponsor obligations, you're probably running out of money. <laughs> but one <laughs> thing that figure probably out. helps me is that because I don't pre-fish that much, I don't think I, like, I don't ever, when I get out there on the lake, I don't ever think, well, that guy's been out here for a month. That doesn't bother me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because I've trained myself to, you got two and a half days, you got to do what you can do. And worry just about that, you. And just because yeah, that guy me. catches 30 pounds doesn't mean that that's hurting you. You can only catch what you can catch. Right. Yeah, just like all these guys in the top 10, they've all had great weeks. You know, they not, but it, sometimes it's almost like the winner was picked before you got there. Does that make sense? Like mm -hmm. Scott distanced himself from everyone else. He was unbeatable. Now think about this. No one else was around the quality of fish to beat Scott. Or if they were, they didn't, they didn't fish in a manner that they could beat Scott. So, but they've all fished equally as well, you know. You say it would be pretty hard for someone to practice themselves up to yeah, the point where they could catch Scott yeah, You could have stayed there for nine months and yeah. not beat yeah. Scott, you know. I mean, Most of the time, locals don't win because they make a mistake, not because they're not prepared. They're like over-prepared right. or they just, ah, I took the wrong, that, that fish led me in the wrong direction. I trusted old history or whatever. Well, how about Bo Browning on Wachita in two weeks? Uh, what kind of chance do you think he's got to uh, defend the home lake? 
or you do well. It kind of goes back to what Ronnie said in that long as he doesn't get caught up in, in the past, that's the, you know, that's the whole deal but with having that, it, it, having that home field advantage, you have to use it. You, you still have to go to the lake like you don't, you've never been there before. It's still seasonal patterns, weather related. You know what I mean? It's, you still have to have that and mix that with your knowledge of the lake. You well, can't. I, I had Scott Martin do a preview before last year's Okeechobee. He said, I can go out my front door, there's the marina, whatever, and I can tell the winds where I think they're gonna bite today and most of the time it works out. So that's pretty good advantage, I would imagine. But yeah, I would think both sitting in the perfect spot and the next lake is, and here's the deal, now that I have the information that um, his roommate will have the northern knowledge when he goes there, I'm sure they're swapping information, so they're gonna put both of their heads together, so that helps. So, so here's the deal, you know, we talked about that earlier, but so these, let's just say that Bo's not having a great practice, but his roommate is. And even though he's not going to the same part of the lake where, but it's that that keys him in, then he knows what to look for, or vice versa. They go to Washita, he helps his roommate. You know, he doesn't say, well, this is the spot you need to be fishing. He just says, this is what they're doing, and it helps steer him in the right direction. So he does have a little bit of teamwork there throughout the year to help him. And you know, and here's the deal, it's, the lone wolf way is the hardest way. <laughs> Jason you know, Christie says yeah, he didn't. I mean, you know, and, you, and you, you see some, you know, you're only as good as your practice. But if Ronnie and I are staying together, I'm, not I'm as good day. as Ronnie at my, and my practice. So that <laughs> on the times, if I don't figure it out, maybe Ronnie, you know, Ronnie's like, all you need to do is just wind that buzz bait down those slick banks and that's where they are. But I'm, I'm serious and then I start running the lake and get a few bites and get keyed into that deal and that's the way that, that's the reason you see a lot of teamwork these days. I mean, I, I know three, four, Scott Martin stays with a whole house full of oh, guys. Yeah. Canterbury, Avery, yeah. you know what I mean? There are yeah. a lot of guys doing that. Um, but how you, much good information actually is We well, just have to be able to trust the person you're staying can with. Can you catch it? Can you catch the fish that the person telling you is doing it? Right. Like if Hackney is a deep water specialist and we're together, he could tell me until I'm blue in the face they're in 45 feet of water off of the last drop before the creek channel. That's yeah. not how I fit. I just can't go yeah, do his Yeah, but typically fish. At, the, at this level and higher, the elites, if a guy tells me, goes, look, they're on the ends of these knobs in 45, I don't care who you are, I can catch them. You, you, you yeah, know what I mean? Sure. Like these guys, like that that elite group. If you give if any, all they need is a just a little bit of information. They don't need a lot, just a little bit to get them started in the right direction. And that they're and it's like a light. And so I, I've seen it. It's like when you do, even if you're just out there by yourself practicing, and all of a sudden it clicks. It's like a light bulb went off. You know. So then you're like, oh yeah, now. And then you're like, I saw. I've been by a ton of places that were the right deal. And these guys are that good. They just need a little bit. Well, I remember uh, Cherry and Brock Mosley were trying to guide Tyler Rivette, who only wanted to punch and whatever, and he was kind of stubborn. I guess you gotta, you know, try different things out of I your comfort zone. I stayed zone. by them last year. Brad Watley is probably the best thing that happened to Rivette and Hank Cherry last year. Because so many times Brad got on them and keyed them in. And they really? were honest. They don't. They, I was just at a Bash University with them a week or so ago and uh, they were talking about it. You know, I mean, it's so they're friends and they trust one another's information and uh, they did, they were, when we were there, they were talking about the St. Lawrence River. It helped two or three of them caught big bags off of, mm. off of Brad's fish. I'm, I'm serious. For real. And he said that, he said, you know, I was, had a tech malfunction and some mechanical problems he at did. Champlain, but he was on, like he's like beside the winners. Like he's right there. So that makes sense. And that's hard. That's hard for some anglers when you don't see it on the leaderboard, but you know you have the ability and you know you found the right fish and it just doesn't click in the two or three, four days that it matters. But like, you know, I know how to find the fish for it to click and you're kind of waiting it out for when it's gonna click because something happens here, something happens there. 
you find the winning fish, you get the last boat number, and you're, there's a guy there, you know, it's like, ah, when is this gonna line up where I found them and it, and it translates. And yeah, some, I think the biggest thing that hurt Brad the last couple of events were the, he was having issues with his. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah with his equipment. Wind and tech and yeah. Yeah. But his roommates <laughs> exploited it for him. And which is nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? That's, uh, and they trust one another, but that's the main thing. If you're gonna share information with someone like that, you must trust them. Yeah, that's, that's and, they, and they must be trustworthy. <laughs> that's the key to brother-in-law in it, that's, for sure. That's right, yeah, you gotta yeah. be careful because you know, fishermen have been known to tell fish tales. No. So, strange as it seems. Strange as it seems. <laughs> I remember doing a story with Fighter and Gussie when Gussie won Tennessee River in the, in the canal. Is that guy filming? And Fighter says, I'm not gonna go in there when he has a chance to win. If there's an event where we all get our checks, yeah, but if the guy's got a chance to win, I'm not gonna share. And they are like broke neck, rubber neck and you just hard to No, Gussie would have let him. Trying to figure out why you're filming me. They couldn't believe it. So is there an angler that you have, maybe maybe you do lone wolf it, but is there anybody that you- filming that kid. Have trusted Heck, why? to talk to? No. <laughs> I like. That. I don't trust any of them. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't need to trust me because I'm never going <laughs> to give them a reason to trust me. <laughs> Always cut the cards. That's what they say. Every nice gesture is a no strings attached. That's Not, it. I'm, I'm taking you in, or you're taking me in, and thanks for the thanks that's for where the, it that's stops. Good. <laughs> I'm taking you out. <laughs> Scott Martin right there as we Ooh. take a look at our unofficial results. He's looking like he's in pretty good shape here as we head into the last 15 minutes. He better keep his foot the on the throttle, 10 Tommy. minutes of fishing. I know, you gotta keep it buttoned up <laughs> until the very end, that's for sure. But uh, I have to say cautiously that he's wow. looking, looking like he could be our winner if he can make it back. We'll be back to look at a, a lot of the great, great fish catching we have seen today right after this. St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Okeechobee, presented by Seven, sponsored by Ranger Boats. By Rapala. And by Yamaha. We are down to the short rows, as they say in the farming business right now, the very, very end of our fishing day as we take a look back at what we have seen during the course of this day. Our fantastic top 10 who have qualified to fish on championship Saturday, each of them to be congratulated. Easton Fothergill, having a pretty magical year for the past six months. Yeah, coming off of the best season of any college team in 2023, winning team of the year, following it up with a top five finish in the national championship, going to the college classic bracket. He had emergency brain surgery, had to recover, got cleared just a few days before the College Classic bracket at Milford Lake. Then he goes in there and dominates each round and then beats out Tucker Smith in the final round to make the, college, make the Bassmaster Classic and entries and representation of the College Series for the Opens this year. Easton, the Minnesota angler, is thrilled that there are a couple in his region of the country on the schedule this year as well. And a top 10, you couldn't probably start your season any better. Giant. Caught a pretty steady all day long, but this was the highlight right here. Personal best, I think he said. Yes, he did. To beat the personal best he'd gotten the day before, I think, was yeah. what, it, what the story was. Nine pounds there for Eastern Father Gill. How about Matt Adams from Alabama? I don't know if this was a, well, we'll get to his possible personal best here in just a minute, but. Uh, I'm gonna say in there. What you would you would probably. say is a sort of the uh, the uh, sort of original original Okeechobee look here. Yeah, more of a typical area that yeah. he was fishing in. Adams has been not far. It's a good one. For the most part, from Randall Tharp, even though both well. have never seen each other throughout throughout the day. Both popped off early this morning when when others were struggling. They both had limits and good fish as well. And then Adams at a certain point in the day. Made a transition to the monkey box to give it a shot, which is a place that has changed vastly, but he said the water looked good in there, and so. Another bait. He's been keeping a lot of things honest this week with a with a big Thanks. stick. Not lost one somewhere, but if you run out of cold tags. Do you know what year this is for him in the, uh, in the open? 
I think you said second year fishing all the opens. Come here, babe. Let's I'm not go. sure about Matt. Let's go. I'll check real quick. Hang. Six fifteen. I don't think he has actually, any other no, this is actually his Big. first open. Oh, nice. Get your butt in here. <laughs> 6.15, he followed up with a 5.7. That uh, certainly made things look really good on this champions, championship Saturday for Matt Adams. Paul Marks, the angler from Georgia, Lake Lanier guy. Paul's been dominating the yep. local scene around Pretty Lake nice Lanier. And, said, you know what, it's about time. If I'm gonna try to make the Elite Series, I wanna start now. So he jumped out there with his buddy Tucker Smith and some others, and they're gonna be traveling, doing all nine events, and put know. their brains together and found enough And he started make. off yeah. very well. Yeah. <sighs> Going to turn 23 start. in May. Another one. Young guy. Forced him out Another on young angle. Seagar Tatsu. Stuff so strong, just throwing 12 pound. It's unbelievable. Been living in the rim canal, fishing eight to 12 feet of water, seeing fish that are on the bottom, uh, a little bit deeper. Uh -huh. They've had really good bags, but yes, like you said, Greg, they're not necessarily replenishing, and each day it's gone down a little bit in weight. Today was much tougher of a start for him, the last person, uh, or to catch a fish this morning, Let's and then go. he was one of the last ones to catch a limit. Yeah. He had 27 the first day? 26 and change. change. Yep. Yeah. 5-8 there uh, later on during the day. Really helped his cause. Randall Tharp, picked by our the, the, the lead man on our panel here to be the uh, ex Start elite the angler to do the best this year through the EQs. Oh, he started out great today. Yeah, he's been winding for the three days of competition. He has caught all 15 bass on a, a jackhammer with a shimmer sad from Zoom on the back of it. Gave us a great breakdown of that after one of his first five or six pounders yes. of the day. He's had a lot of really shorter, healthier looking fresh fish, it seems, that have pulled up in that region. You know, much like Scott and many of the others, not a lot of fish. Up, not, not, they're not catching a high number of fish, just catching really, really quality yes. fish. Yes! Boom! Like, Dark's not catch, didn't catch a lot of, he didn't, he's not going through a lot of those male fish to, start, to catch man. those big like ones. A, it just seems like the way he's fishing like is able to target the, the big day. ones. And as you informed us yesterday as we were preparing for our show today, he, he, people may not be aware of how much time he has put in on this lake in particular. Realistically, probably has as much experience as anyone in the field on Okeechobee. Yes. It seemed like Okeechobee of old, the, the oh fact that Brandon God, McMillan, Randall long, Tharp, Scott three, Martin, three guys combined to have probably spent <sighs> yes. a couple hundred thousand yeah, days, so you know, on the water. Look at how short it is. A couple hundred thousand days <laughs> in a lot of years. That's, that's probably incorrect, but a bunch of time. Tucker Smith trying the EQs this year. Highly decorated high school, college angler. Won a giant big money tournament to boot separate from those endeavors, so uh, he's, a, he's got a lot of time on the water and a lot of successful time on the water. Started the day eight pounds behind. A leader after two days, Scott Martin. And yesterday, Kyle Jesse was with him about midday. He only had three fish, but one of them was a good one. And then he slowly, the last three hours, four hours of the day, he was able to put in a couple good ones and be able to get up to that 23, almost 24 pound mark to not maintain his distance behind Scott. He lost a little bit of ground, but to stay right there in the top three. And also just shows kudos to how good he is with his electronics because even he's competing against those guys with all that experience there and he's able to use his equipment and find places that no one else has been fishing. Well, unofficially he's had the, his toughest day has been today. Never could get anything much over four pounds to come into the boat. There's one right there, though. Still probably going up second? Close. Yep, looking like yep. second. Like second for Tucker Smith. So he will be the EQ points leader after this yeah, event. In theory, yes.
the seventh open. He fished Little four in 2022 one. and only two last year. Not great finishes. Best was in 22 and 23rd at Hartwell. Oh, yeah. All right, we go. How about one more time for one of those one of the most memorable days ever? You're on Bassmaster Live. And all caught on live. Oh, my goodness. It has been a thrill to watch this one. Scott Martin, not, not a real fast start right out of the box, but he said his whole scheme has been built around patience. Wait it out. They will. You will get there, and he got there. Really all happened in about a three-hour window. He catches that six to seven pounder. Still had a bunch of one to twos. And then that midday portion when he caught that first nine pounder and we were in there eating some tacos and we were like, uh oh, it's about to turn on. And we see, we come back and see another nine plus pounder. We see Easton Fothergill catching that. We said this lake's turned on. Scott Martin continued to put on a show, Greg, with, you know, another eight back plus up. pounder. Oh my God. The biggest, he'd already yeah. broke the all time record the first day of the event and now he broke it the second time today. <laughs> That's the most day, winning weight day, ever in an open. Day. Probably the, he's going to win by the Woo! largest margin in the Bass 13 pounds, open. yeah. We, we had a 10 pounds. Gotta Velvet's be, win was be. 10 pounds. Yeah, I, would, I, I would think it's got to be. I can't imagine crazy. where else it would have been more well, than that. We just caught a monster, dude. Because all those other heavyweight ones where those big, big bags man. came from, <laughs> a lot of people caught That's big bags. You, know, you notice Swindle's single day biggest bag wasn't in the top five because people in that same tournament did that for a day. Oh. So they were they weren't too far behind him. him in that event. Biggin. Oh my gosh, dude. Bigger than the other one. The 10 pounder, dude. Got him. That is it, baby! Woo! Woo! That's it! Got rid of a that one has to be pounder. a 10-pounder. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh, bro. I think you're right. That is the Bassmasters Classic, baby. <laughs> Darn. Swindle only won by three. Suzanne, how about that? his victory, three pounds, so. Oh, she's yeah. been praying on her butt off. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, gosh, dude, I got her. I got her, bro. She's the monster, dude. They are checking in right now, Tommy. Yep. What a great day it's been. They're going to get to the lock right there outside of Rollins, check in, declare they're done for the day, lock through. Make it official. And the weigh-in will be shortly after that for sure. <laughs> well, if you want to see who wins, be sure and tune in at 3 o'clock here. That's we still got to get back. You still got to get back? That's right. So there may still be some question about that, though I doubt it. Yes. Well, we are so thankful to have been witness to this incredible day to kick off the year for Bassmaster Live and to kick off a newly sort of rededicated, re-emphasized uh, open series here, uh, St. Saint, Saint Croix Open Series, and uh, we are yeah. way to start most it off. impressed. I'm yes. most impressed. I think the ROI, Tommy, on do we do all nine live, I said there's a lot of stories to be had and the hardworking folks behind the scenes of Birmingham and Little Rock made it happen. All nine will be live on the final day and it's for reasons like this. Today's awesome. action is fantastic. Fantastic. All the, the people who work so hard, the advertisers who stepped up and uh, I think the sport is going to be uh, even more exciting as a result of it. That is it, baby! Pathway to the Bassmaster Elite That's Series it. is a powerful yeah. thing, and of course, entry into the Bassmaster Classic. That guy just got some of that today. Wherever it is, hey, only only one person probably knows where the Classic is, and that's Eric Lopez. And uh, Scott Martin <laughs> would love to be the second one to know because he is qualified for the Classic as long as he weighs in. Weigh in live now, Bassmaster.com. Check that out. Final day here of the St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Okeechobee, presented by Seven, our first Bassmaster Live of the year, I have to say, was pretty darn good. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time. See you in two weeks at Lake Washita.